Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of the podcast. Cody Rich and I talk about building your platform, whether it be a YouTube channel or a podcast, and his uh, experience in building his own brand, the Rich Outdoors podcast, which if you're into hunting podcasts, I I would imagine you probably listen to his or know of it, and if you don't listen to it, you should definitely check it out. And uh, he's, he's a titan, man. I mean, he's huge in the podcasting world and uh, has a huge podcast for hunters and, and just... Uh, just a really big motivation for guys like me that want to see, you know, how big can a guy get? You look at Cody, he's one of the bigger ones out there. And uh, just really appreciate him coming onto the show, um, letting me ask questions about how he built his platforms, you know, how to build a podcast, what to expect, some things, some tips, tricks uh, in order to get some growth and, and some momentum. And for guys that are wanting to do the same thing, because we hit on YouTube as well, because I'm more of the YouTube side, Cody's more of the podcast side. And uh, it's kind of, it's just kind of funny seeing the differences and the similarities between each platform because he started off on podcasting and I started <laughs> started off on YouTubing. So it made for a really dynamic conversation and I'm really excited to share this with guys that are wanting to learn and grow uh, their platforms as well. So thank you, Cody, for coming on to the show. I do want to tell you guys about his backcountry fuel box and that's a basically a subscription box but uh really really unique one and uh for guys that are love trying you know food out before you take it into the backcountry that's designed to keep you fed and and well nourished this is going to be a great box for you guys because you, you get to try these companies foods before you go on a hunt so i don't want to find out that something tastes like crap when i'm you know six eight miles deep i want to find out prior so i don't pack it with me if i'm not going to eat it when i'm back there so it's a really good service and if you guys want to try it out I'll, I'll put a link down in the description box below but you're supporting a great guy you're supporting an even you know a well-established podcast you're helping him grow and uh you know he definitely deserves it he works his tail off and uh, can't say enough good stuff about how this conversation went and cody in general so we'll go ahead without any further ado cody from the rich outdoors podcast talking about platforms and building a podcast I to the room and i just have those headsets that you're wearing mm -hmm. um, make the audio technica headsets honestly i think it's a more organic conversation if you just have like a lav mic plugged in mm. because it doesn't feel like you're sitting there broadcasting a nascar event oh um, yeah yeah you know and like i just depends but then those are good at shows when you're trying to cancel out a lot of noise what do you mean by uh, the other mic what's the other mic you're talking about uh, versus, uh, versus these oh like just a just a lav mic so if you just oh. have like a lav mic that went straight to the zoom yeah so it just clips to your shirt you know you're just listening you don't have the the input where you're listening to all the voices but you know you're sitting in a room conversation you can hear it normally do you still uh, get so, all the uh quality yeah uh, if anything it's better quality really I mean, yeah uh, are, are you using sure mics uh, um i think they're sony's really yeah i think they're sony's when i just like a lav xlr mic uh mm. I believe that's it i want to write that down I'm but they're spending all this shit already they're like 100 150 bucks and so like it's tough because when you have those you know they work but it's like hard to have a 150 dollar headset for <laughs> shows a 150 dollar headset for in studio and a 300 dollar mic for yeah you know, doing this kind of stuff so it's like it builds up but well, that's the, I've been kind of lucky cause I like the bro guys are what convinced me to do this. Like, dude, you should do it. I'm like, you really think he's like, do, yeah, do it. And I was like, all right, fuck it. So I, I bought all the stuff and then I had all this money sitting in an account that was going to go towards hunts, um, yeah. from YouTube. Yeah. And so I just used all my YouTube money and I still have some <laughs> left, but I, yeah, I was like zero out of pocket. Well, I guess it was out of pocket cause it was my money, but it was yeah. I had this big, I don't know, a couple grand sitting from YouTube, just like, all right, we'll just move it over here and then maybe we can grow that and I'll reimburse myself later. I, I don't know. And so I, I was able to start off with good shit right off the bat. Um, which helps, which is good. Yeah. And, I, and like, you know, it's like a, like you had said, like, you know, I'm sure Cody told this, you know, the barrier to entry on a podcast is pretty low, like, you know, one headset or a couple mics yeah. and, and you're good to go. Uh, you know, you don't have to have the nicest stuff to test it. And like, you know, it's all about kind of testing the minimum viable product. So instead of spending like $2,000 and being like, I'm all in on podcasting, mm -hmm. you know, like you could buy an ATR 2100 and plug it into your laptop that you already own 
and kick out a podcast and see if it's for you. Maybe you're like, man, I hate doing podcasts. <laughs> and not have, you know, a thousand bucks in gear. I loved it. I loved it. Cause the first time I edited a podcast, it took me like, I listened to the whole thing and then I li- yeah. literally would edit out all my ums. Like the first couple yeah. episodes, you might hear like two ums in a, in a one hour episode, <laughs> two hour episode. Like I was spending four hours editing a one hour podcast. And then yeah. um, now it's like, okay, 20 minutes I'm edited. I'm done. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's, it's just way less uncut. And I don't know, man, it's way easier than editing a video for sure for you. So it's like, I can get, I don't get near the exposure, but like, I don't know. It's way more fun doing a podcast edit than it is a YouTube edit. Like 10 Oh, times. for sure. But for, for sure. You and have a YouTube know. channel too or what? You know, I don't know. We could get out. Are we, are we using all this or are we just going? Or are we recording just recording just in case? <laughs> you know, I don't care. Uh, I don't, I don't care. care. Yeah. I, I, how much time do you got? Uh, I think I got dinner tonight, but like I got plenty of time. Oh, okay. Probably. I was literally working on, yeah, um, I, I kept working on Instagram. I was working on Instagram and then I was going to go, it's freaking pouring here, dude. Like, well, you, you know, you grew up here and uh, I was like, I'm not going to go record a YouTube video today. I'm not going to, cause I was going to shoot my new BTX. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah I, I came back to Oregon for Christmas and uh, I think in the first <laughs> probably 12, 18 hours that I was there, it uh-huh. rained nonstop. And I was like, I think I've seen more rain in the last 12 hours than I did in 2018 combined. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Where are you living at now? You're in Colorado or something? In Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> As I say, everybody moved from here to either Colorado or Montana. You got yeah, yeah, we're all in Bozeman. Shooting bowl over there. Uh, who else moved over there? Uh, I was trying to think from Oregon. Yeah, uh, you got both Josh and Ty. Yeah, yeah, Josh and Ty are over there. I know that. I was trying to think of someone else too, but yeah, there's a lot of people moving to Bozeman. It's kind of become yeah. the hub, you know. It has it. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't good. mind after hunting Idaho this year. First time I ever hunted out of state. It was like just that little pinprick on the map that we hunted. It was like, this is so much better than Oregon. (laughs) Not even a contest. Like if I could do the same shit I'm doing here and like for work, I would immediately sell my house, everything and transplant. Yeah. It was like just walking around and we weren't, you know, we were seeing, you know, 40, 50 deer a day and no big bucks or anything, but the, the, the landscape, the, the mindset, the people, the animals. It's tough. I mean, there's a lot of like the family aspect of it. You know, you got still got family in Oregon. And so it's like the back and forth becomes tough and yeah. a little more travel and things like that. But, you know, honestly, it came down to me. It was like I always wanted to do it. And it was something I always talked about. And I just had to pull the trigger and do it, you know, and like, hey, let's just go test it out. And I, I talked to Josh and Ty about it. I think I actually asked Ty about it when he first moved. And it was like uh, he had just got there. And, you know, he's he basically said, you're never going to regret it. You know, there's no, like you move here and it feels like this big move and like you, you weigh the decision. You're like, I don't know. And then three months after you're there, it's like, yeah, I don't think I'll ever go back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm just traveling into Idaho. I, I've been a homebody. I've only been to California twice in my life, Washington a few times, Idaho <laughs> once. I mean, like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I need to get out more. Do you know, you know what graffiti is here locally in Oregon graffiti? Uh-uh. You don't know what graffiti is? It it's like classic car. It's the after 4th of July. Uh-uh. It's the, uh, it's like graffiti. It's old, old cars from like the old cars, like six car seven Mustangs and all that stuff. And okay. we have these parades around here. It's huge. People come from all over the country to Roseburg. I thought that was a national holiday. And so <laughs> I'm like, my friends are like, dude, you're a moron. I'm like, I need to get out more guys. <laughs> like, I literally thought like everybody did graffiti, but no. It so was, did it start like your first out of state hunt was Idaho then? Uh, my first out of state hunt was Idaho this year. I did go to Africa this year. So I skipped, oh, nice. all, I skipped all the out of state and just went <laughs> out of country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was eye opening, but which was I mean Idaho was my first. Like I was pretty homebody, uh, you know, growing up like small town farm kid from Oregon. Like I didn't, you know, we didn't travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you went to Eastern Oregon to go hunting, and that was a big trip. Yep. But uh, yep. I, you know, kind of got I, I got a job and traveled a lot. But then I, you know, kind of got started in the hunting tool route and and looking at you know all these out of state hunts. And I knew a couple guys that hunted in Idaho, and that's what started it for me. I went on a you know my first hunt in Idaho. And, didn't know anything just went there and you know, ended up killing a good bull and thinking like man this this spot in idaho is better than most of the draw places in oregon yeah what am i doing and then that was kind of what kicked it off for me and yeah then it's like the sky's the limit which yeah. is funny because i think when you grow up in oregon 
you almost have to be like this out of state conscious, like tags and trying to get tags and things like that, just because Oregon's not that great and getting worse on, on tags. And so you, you learn to, to start applying out of state. And then I moved to Montana and I'm like, man, there's enough tags just here and I could hunt next to my house that I really don't have to go out of state yeah. anymore. <laughs> and the quality of the animals point. are probably way better. I mean, yeah. like I talked to guys over in Idaho and granted everybody, um, everybody's there's no road hunting where we were at. I mean, if you yeah. are counting on road hunting, you're probably not going to kill one. Yeah. And so everybody's like five, six miles deep. We're all, and no one shoot, no one that we talked to would shoot less than a four point unless it was a giant three point. Like, yeah. We were hunting general season. I'm like, this is like the twilight zone over here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was incredible. I passed up two bucks a day. Um, Cause I went, I went, I didn't, you know, I didn't drive 11 hours to kill a dink. I went over there, you know, yeah. I'd already had a good season over here. And uh, I ate my tag for rifle, went back over there for archery. Didn't find anything. I found one good buck for archery, but I got within like 200 yards and he was gone. Yeah. So yeah, but it was, it was cool. It was, it's just cool. I mean, an archery rut tag here in Oregon. That, <laughs> yeah. Metolius. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> and, and I don't know if you heard this, they made a uh, spring bear over here. I live in Roseburg. Yeah. They made spring bear here, a draw tag. Now. So Southern Oregon's now a draw tag. Yeah. Yeah, man. I a- I want to get somebody from the ODF, and I don't like talking bad about the ODF and W because you know we need to be positive about them, but yeah. they make it really hard when they do stupid shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man, like I just want to get somebody on here and just ream them, but I wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't help anybody. It would. Then you'd never draw a tag again, and I'd never, yeah, <laughs> I would never draw a tag again. But so, man, I I've got so many questions for you. I I literally started the podcast don't didn't have really much to you know, anybody that had had a podcast mm-hmm. and I want this to kind of be a more of a, a business more than a hunting episode. Cause yeah. like you and I were talking about, you can make a whole business out of helping guys in the hunting industry get into the hunting industry. It's like yeah. this huge push has created its own little niche. And I, I know I appreciate all the help that I've gotten from the guys that are bigger than me. And so I, I literally am up till midnight texting guys <laughs> have you thought of this? Have you done this? Have you, you yeah. know, trying to help them grow their stuff? And, and, uh, I, I, it's just really rewarding. So if you're down to talk about, you know, yourself, your journey, how you grew the rich outdoors, uh, yeah. I I'm totally, I've got so many questions for you. No, I'm totally dad. I mean, like talking business is kind of like, I think people probably listen to me talk about hunting more than, than business, but I, mm-hmm. I talk about hunting or sorry, business to guys, you know, off air, more than I talk about hunting. So like, I'm totally down to help guys. And, and you know, it's all about like, it's cool to see guys doing what they love. And you know, I'm the same way I came from, you know, a small town farm. And, and like, to me, I I think I've said this before, like the only two options I knew were I was going to grow up to be a farmer, which was like, kind of like what everyone wanted me to do, or I was going to be a firefighter. You know, those are the Mm. two careers that existed. I didn't even know that other careers existed. So, you know, I, you know, was lucky enough to have some pretty good mentors and, pick up the right books at the right time in my life to figure out that like, Hey, you can, you really can do anything you want. And I think that's kind of, you know, the age of social media has really shown that guys can do that. And, you know, born and raised guys and Trent and Cody and I've talked about this quite a bit, and, you know, like just to be able to do what you love is, is pretty special. And I don't think that, you know, 10 years ago it was as available or see, you know, was as easy to get to as it is today. And so like, you know, you see it, you know, you see guys on Instagram, like, man, he's getting paid to go hunting or he's getting to do what he loves Mm -hmm. every day. And that's cool. And so like inspires you, Um, you know, the hard part about that, as you know, is like, that makes it competitive because now everyone wants to do that, of course. Right. right? And so like it, it, it creates its own hiccups because now it's like, yeah, it'd be cool to, be able to make money going hunting or just be able to go hunting more and have it pay for itself, which was like kind of where I was in the beginning. I was like, Hey, if you know, I like to go hunting, if it just paid for itself, I'd be, I'd be pumped. Like I don't even yeah. need to make a living doing it. Just, you know, cover its own cost, and then I can do more of it. Things like that. But that's I do think of, it's, 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 it's definitely growing for sure. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where I was. I was like, man, I, you know, if I could make a dollar on YouTube, I would, I would, That'd be be crazy. I'd be the only person I ever knew that made money on YouTube. Like I don't know yeah. anybody that's ever done that. And then I was like, no one's gonna, no one cares about what I'm doing or who yeah. I am when I started and stuff. And I didn't care, you know. <laughs> so, so when you started, you know, you started on YouTube. Like, 
what was your goal? Like, what was the... Honestly, it was really, really douchey. Uh, it was to show off how far I could shoot a bow. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's it. I'm like, if I can shoot, my goal was to break the world record longest shot. Uh, I, yeah. I missed it on my... I had three shots. I missed it. Um, I should have called off the shot. The wind. I can make all the excuses. Anyways, I was way too cocky and arrogant and, and I missed the shot. So, but that was my goal. I was like, if I can break the world record longest shot, which a guy with no arms named Matt Stutzman has 300 and I think five yards, 310 yards, I was shooting 330. The, the record's with the guy that should have it. He's going to impact way more people breaking the world record with no arms shooting a bow. Like the guy's an yeah. inspiration. So I'm out there trying to break a guy's record with no arms, so, you know, and you, when you put it like that, it sounds like a real douchebag, you know? <laughs> and uh, I'm like, if I can break that, that'll, that'll be the thing that gets me noticed, you know? Like, that's yeah. going to be, and then I'll post it on YouTube, and someone will pick me up, and then I'll make money shooting bows, and I'll live the dream, you know? And I'm like, yeah. pipe dream. And, and, uh, and so I posted videos of me shooting, you know, killer, killer groups at like 250 yards, like that. Yeah. And then I started shooting 300, and then guys are like, well, how are you doing that? well, what are you using? What's your gear? What's this? What's that? I'm like, well, I, here's what I'm doing. And then it kind of just like, well, there's a really guys. And, and another factor back up for a second. And another, another factor was I was watching videos learning. Like I was just soaking up information, researching, testing, just literally sh I shot 18,000 arrows between January. Cause I tracked it 18,000 arrows between January 24th and hunting season. So the end of August, um, yeah. that year, just that year alone and that's years. impressive yeah that's a lot of arrows i'm still paying for it with my shoulders but um <laughs> and i was researching and through all that stuff i was going through the the annals of youtube and uh there was a lot of bad information out there a lot of bad videos where guys were showing other people how to work on bows and they were shoving wrenches in cams to to put it just weird stuff and i'm like what are you i'm like someone's gonna get hurt so one, I changed from helping from being selfish to helping people and then providing a service information and then some entertainment value. And that's when I actually started growing and then kind of just changed my mindset and, and, you know, wanted to just share what I knew because people were so hungry for information, like yeah, really hungry. And so now that's, that's where I'm at. So now it's so like, it might, like, I'm going to take this and it, it's your podcast so we'll run it however you want. Nah, but like, go ahead, man. It's you know, just a conversation. Oh, a lot of the times, like if I'm talking to someone like, Hey, like, you know, here's what I just had this conversation with yesterday with uh, my brother-in-law, you know, was looking at starting a, a rugby podcast and we were talking about the pros and cons and you know where to go, what to do, things like that. And so in the same capacity, you know, you like, that's a great start. And like, I love that you have the humility to be like, Hey, I started from a douchey place, but I fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's fine. Like, you know, I think, uh, it's too many people out there like, Oh, I just want to change the world or, you know, I want to solve yeah. world peace, you know, like some version of that. And it's like, Hey, you know, if you're out there like, Hey, I just want to make a thousand bucks a month. That's cool. That's awesome. Like at least you're honest about it. You know, like if you want to be out there because you want to be the next Jim Shockey, like I just want to be famous. Like that's, that's fine. Like just do you, like as long as you're honest about it, I think that's important. Uh, but like what's, so what's end goal? Like where do you see, you know, an end goal for you as far as, is it, you know, fame, is it money? Is it free equipment? Is it just helping yeah. the world or like, where, where does it go for you? That's a good question. You know, Trent from born and raised when I was making the decisions along with my wife, uh, what we were going to do here, he mm -hmm. asked me that same question. And I told him, I can tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do this. If I can't bring my wife home, give her the life that she deserves. You know, I'm not going to go out and yeah. live my dream and have her working 40 hours a week at the bank, you know? Yeah. So I got to figure out a way to bring her home. So my goal is eventually make X amount of money to bring her home and then I'll have her do the edits so we can work together, be a husband mm -hmm. and wife team. And then we'll go and eventually, you know, I, we got to make a lot of money to bring her home, unfortunately, because I want, I want her to have options. You know, if she wants to work, she can work. I'm not a milk chauvinistic pig. I'm not saying she needs to stay at home, be in the kitchen. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying I want to give her options, you know, like if she wants to work, she, you know, good for her. I'll be her biggest cheerleader. But my goal is to make enough money on YouTube or on the podcast to bring her home to, to make her part of the business and then live, uh, live the dream. Like you said, go out, hunt and fish. And then if you read my bio, I thought, you know, it's like three sentences, but I literally thought on that for days before I actually put that in my bio, uh, YouTuber, husband to Kim, bow hunter, podcaster, whatever I think is, is, and then help or sharing my passion for hunting and helping people along the way. And that's yeah. literally what I want to do is 
I want to hunt fish and help people along the way and, and be the best husband I can to my wife. And that's what I want to do. And I know that's like world peace kind of thing that probably yeah. sounds corny, but I mean, that's, if I could bring her home, man, you know, that's to me, I feel like I'm not doing my job as, as a man for her husband. If she has to go out and work, cause I don't have that. I, if yeah. I wasn't good enough to give her that option, I feel like I'm failing. So that's my biggest drive to be honest with you. And it doesn't, that that's important because I do think like, as we look at this, you know, and you know, it starts when you're a single dude and you're like, yeah, I just want to hunt all the time. And it's yeah. easy to say, and like, it's almost easy to accomplish, but the, the, what a lot of guys are missing is like, you know, and you see this all the time, whether wives let them hunt as much as they want or not. And like, that's, that's, that's a huge other conversation, a rabbit hole we won't go into. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you look at it as like, yeah, I just want to travel the world and do this thing. Well, it's not really fair because when you become a husband, or a wife, whatever it may be, you're a partner now. And this is like a team thing. And so you really have to look at it as like, okay, if I can't, you know, like I can't just leave someone at home with the kids and then go do my thing. If that's not what they want, you know, if they want to be a stay at home mom, that's fine. Or a stay at home dad, that's fine. But you have to look at it from a little bit different perspective as you, as you know. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's really important to look at it like, Hey, where do you want to go? Like for me, we just, had this, I just had this conversation yesterday and you know, like, I think purpose is really, really important. And I think I've said it on another podcast, but like, you know, it starts out, you just want to make money doing what you love. And then right. you, you realize you, you do that and you're like, oh, well, now I just don't have any time to do anything because I'm, you know, I made money, but I don't have time. So you got to figure out a way to now make money, but also have time. And then you get to there and you're like, well, my life doesn't really have any purpose because I'm at this job that I don't really love and I'm not doing anything. And so, mm -hmm. you know, as you get older, purpose becomes more, more important. And so now you have to go back and reclimb a different ladder that involves making money while also having time while now having purpose as well. And I don't think you have to know your purpose at 22 years old. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes kids are making or even myself at 30, you know, like you don't, you don't have to know what your purpose is yet. Mm -hmm. You just have to make sure you keep an eye on it because you have to understand that when you're 50 purpose has a different meaning than it does at 30, you know? And so for me, it's like, I don't know what my purpose is yet. And honestly, I can say that with complete honesty. I have an idea and I kind of, you know, want to go in that direction, but I don't know that it has to be the number one thing. And I think yeah. too many kids are kind of getting wrapped on, well, you know, I'm going to start this YouTube channel for this. And it's like, you're 22 you know, purpose isn't the biggest thing. And if it is great, but like, don't, don't be so focused on it that you lose sight of like where you're going. And, yeah. you know, and, and one of the other things you pointed out, I think is really important. It's like, it's about the journey because like, if you come out and say, well, uh, I'm the YouTube expert on X, Y, Z, like that has a finite end to it. And so when you kind of come out and say, Hey, here's my journey to learn how to shoot 300 yards. Yeah. Like there's no end to that and there's no right and wrong answer. So now you have this ability to kind of grow and like that gives you long game. And I think that's important as well. It's like, you know, if you want to come out and be the best whitetail hunter in the world, that has an end, you know, people are going to get tired of watching you do that, you know, for the next what, 30 years. Yeah. And so I think it's important to be like, Hey, here's my journey. Here's this thing that I'm working on. Come along with me. And whether it's, you know, for you, you know, you love testing new equipment trying stuff out and shooting those videos. And so like that has no end to it because you're always going to be testing new stuff, learning, yeah. growing as a person. And I think people enjoy following that journey. I totally agree. And like you said, being able to evolve, because like yeah. I said, you, I started from a selfish place, man. Like yeah. I wasn't a douche. I always loved helping people, but I was thinking about me, not the end user, not yeah. the watcher, the subscriber and evolving to, and this, this, this niche where, you know, helping people get into the hunting industry for me, that's a, that's a recent, uh, thought, a di recent discovery for me. Like if I could be like, and I'm going to get hammered for this. If I could be somebody like a Gary V for hunters, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit less vague or like harsh than he is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think the hunters are really, you know, a lot of guys eat Gary V up in the hunting industry. I don't know if you know who Gary V is or you listen. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I, I read, everybody I, I know. Book in 2009. Oh and really? I, fun fact. And this is actually pretty common with Gary V people, but uh, I read crush it in 2009. I was reading a ton of books uh, mm. and I read that book and I was like, this guy's a douche. I did not <laughs> like that guy. Uh, and then it wasn't until uh, I think it was jab, 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 right hook came out in 2000. It was like a couple years later or whatever mm -hmm. it came out. I was like, man, he's actually right. But yeah, 2009 when Crush It came out, I did not like the guy. Really? But yeah, did not like him. I liked him, and and it seems like when I listened to him, I was like, man, why did I, why didn't I think of that, or why why didn't I think of that? Yeah. 
It's pretty common sense. But you know, one of the things that you had mentioned, and actually it stems from a Gary uh, thing, is like, you know, I think a lot of people think that there's one thing that's going to make them popular. If I mm. just, you know, break the world record, I'll be yeah. big. If yeah. I just kill this big bull, I'll be famous or this big white tail. And, uh, you know, you start to compromise your values when that happens and you look at the world as the one thing. But I can tell you, like, it doesn't matter. Like, the, there's never one thing. They're just building blocks. You know, like, how many times, you know, Joe pops up on Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan will mention my podcast or something and everyone's like, oh my God, you know, like, it doesn't, <laughs> it's like this little bump and it's, it has nothing to do with it, but there's never one thing. It doesn't matter if you're on the tonight show, you never, that's not going to be the one thing. It's just building. Right. And I, I think that you said that, I think when you chase the one thing, yeah, you, you, your morals get, you know, you, you kind of just take a chip out of your moral code every time you do that <laughs> and you start like looking for that next one thing that one next one thing but if you start looking at those as just mere building blocks that you keep getting to yeah. and it doesn't matter when they get there then you're just you're going in the right direction and i think that's yeah. really important i see a lot of a lot of people trying to get into the industry off that one move yeah no i, I that's being short term versus long term and yeah. i mean i i'm so glad you said that cuz i run into guys that are doing that all the time yeah. and I like I said I did that myself you know that world record shot hey if I could do that that one thing and then yeah. you know I mean that is so, so spot on man look look at your YouTube channel like what do you what would you consider you know the the most the most growth has come from on your YouTube what's made you successful on a YouTuber one video or just oh, no, is there I mean what what's the things that have kind of attributed to your success is it one consistency video? Is it like consistency honesty unbiased and uh yeah you have to upload you have to upload you're not going to grow if you don't upload you can't upload yeah. twice a year and expect you know everybody to follow you you know yeah. so i was just i just had this conversation my wife just went to the gym and uh we got in i call them debates we got in a little bit of an argument because we're like she's like trying to we're trying to figure out what frequency should I upload? I uploaded yesterday and the day before that. And then today um, I'm up like three times the amount of subscribers I've gained the last two days. And that's because I've uploaded the last two days. I'm like, well, what if I uploaded today? And would I you know, would it keep going up or would it go back down? And, uh, and so she's like, don't bring yourself out. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to bring, you know, so we're having this huge conversation here and, and just trying to figure out what the best thing is for me. But frequency is huge. You have these guys like Lunkers TV who, mm -hmm. and there's somebody else I'm forgetting, but they uploaded literally, I think every day for like two years, they went from zero to a million subscribers in two years. I think is what yeah. every day. And it wasn't like fancy edits. It wasn't this, it wasn't that. It was just work ethic, consistency, yeah. blog, and that's it. And creating a value to the, the, to the watcher. If there's no value, people aren't going to tune in. Right. So, and that's the thing is like, you can look and be like, you can look at someone like Lunkers and think, well, if I just posted every day, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I'd be a million fans, but that's not right. necessarily the case. It has to be, you know, it has to be good enough. It you know, does. And, then, and people talk about like, well, you know, a uh, YouTube video has to be under five minutes. Nope. If, if star Wars posted a 12 hour <laughs> video, like everyone's going to watch it. I don't care if it's on YouTube or yeah. where it is, you know? So Here's my general rule with the YouTube video. If you're making a 10 minute video out of a five minute video, you're wasting people's time by five minutes. That's where you're, mm -hmm. if you don't have enough value to make a 10 minute video, that's where that comes from. And so I just made a 16 minute video, one of the longest videos I've ever made, 16 minutes. And it is way, I mean, the watch time, it starts dumping off at about 10 minutes. That's really good retention. That's for yeah. me, that's really good retention. But the whole thing is chock full of, of stuff. I mean, it's not like I'm rambling on, rambling on. No, it's like, it's, I, love, I love jump cuts. Some guys hate jump cuts. Jump cuts uh, keep people's attention. Point, 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 point. That's okay. how you get better retention. So, you know, that, I don't buy that for a minute. You know, whoever said that, they, they just don't have enough value in their videos to make a 10-minute long video whoever said that so that's true like i i mean i produced a six hour podcast this year and i just love and, that yeah and like you know it's almost zero drop-off rate and so like yes, to say right. you know what <laughs> what what it is is like or what it isn't is it doesn't really matter which is interesting you were getting back we, we circle back to this question you asked me why i don't have a youtube or why i don't focus on youtube and you know 
this will probably, I was going to ask you the same thing. You, you see a lot of people like, well, should I start a YouTube? Should I start a podcast? What should I do? You know what? I guess before I circle back onto my theory or why we don't spend a lot of time on YouTube, you know, when you looked at YouTube versus podcast, obviously you already kind of already had a YouTube channel. Uh, you know, what was your reasoning behind YouTube versus podcast or vice versa? Uh, uh, I want to, I want to preface this answer with, <laughs> with a story that involves me and you. I messaged you back when I was creating my intro for the podcast. Okay. And I, I want people to realize how big of an idiot I am here when it comes to technology. I asked you, dude, how do you get rid of this stupid audio jungle wording <laughs> and the audio jungle? Like I'm, I spent hours on this shit. I was like, <laughs> I'm pulling out my hair. I downloaded it so many times. I was, what I was doing is I wasn't buying the actual thing. I kept, I was like trying to like split <laughs> and I'm like, this is bullshit. Audio jungle sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're like, dude, you have to buy it. And I was like, and then it gets rid of it. You're like, yeah, I was like, oh. it's a copyright thing. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it's like, Cody, it's like, Cody's it's never like, going to ever have me on a show <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, not at all. So I want to preface that, and then I'm going to preface it with another thing. Um, last June, uh, or no, two Junes ago at Hoodoo. So not mm -hmm. last year, but the June before that. So about a year prior to me starting my podcast, I was uh, shooting with a few buddies, and. Uh, they were talking about the Joe Rogan podcast, your podcast, a few other podcasts. And I'm like, I'm like, what do you listen to? Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to fuck pay for a podcast. I'm not going to pay to listen to somebody's TV show. That's stupid. And they're like, what do you mean pay? I'm like, well, it's like two bucks an episode. What, what's the catch here? I'd never <laughs> listened to a podcast before. And then uh, like, dude, it's free. I'm like, what do you mean? It's free. He's like, you have it on your phone already. It comes on your phone. You download it. It's free. They don't charge you nothing. I'm like, I'm like, Oh, and then from that point, a year later, I have my own podcast. <laughs> I didn't know what a podcast was. I didn't know anything about a podcast and YouTube had been around a lot longer. And so that's why I started on, on YouTube. Um, I'm glad I, I'm glad I did though, because like I alluded to earlier, I'm, I'm an open book. I don't care people, what people uh, know I make cause it's not a sponsor. It's a, it's, it's a business. I make, I'll make about two, about 3000 on YouTube this year. And that, like I said earlier, has paid for the podcast startup and all that stuff. Right. So it's, I feel like it'd be easier to make money on YouTube versus a podcast off, off the bat. I, I don't know. Cause like you, like you, you and I alluded to, I, uh, in a conversation outside this, I, I don't care if I make money for the first couple of years, long term, mm -hmm. I don't care. Eventually I, I, I care, but you know, I mean, I think, I think a guy could make money quicker on YouTube. I, I don't know. Um, oh, interesting. I don't, I, don't yeah, I look at, I look at the opposite. So it was just funny that you were talking about, like you didn't know what a podcast was. So <laughs> I started listening to podcasts. It must've been 2008, somewhere in that time frame. Really? Yeah. And the like, time the, it came out. yeah, I remember like, God, what was that show? It was some sports show. And someone was like, Hey, here's, have you seen this podcast thing? And, uh, <laughs> ironically, it's a friend who's a radio show producer. Anyway. Uh, so I started listening to these podcasts and I was, I was traveling a lot. And so I was, I was listening to a lot of marketing podcasts. Uh, God, I wish I could name that podcast. I remember I like, had a Staples <laughs> commercial in it. Uh, anyway, so I, you know, I listened to podcasts for years and it never even dawned on me that there could be a hunting podcast and never even a million years. So I was just listening to marketing podcasts, business podcasts. I was listening to an audio book every week at that time, like just churning through audio like crazy. And I don't, and I didn't at the time and I still really don't use YouTube like at all. Hmm. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be like how to fix my iPhone or, or something like that <laughs> on a very practical level, but I really don't, I, I don't think I saw my first Casey Neistat video until last year. And it was like, I, I was like, Oh, this is pretty interesting, but I, I just didn't use the platform. Right. And so for me, as someone who's listened to hundreds and hundreds of audiobooks and thousands of podcasts, like podcasts made sense. And like, I understood this well and I listened to it a lot. And mm -hmm. so then it was like, Oh, someone should do a hunting podcast. And at the time there was none, you know, gritty Jay and I kind of all pretty much launched our podcast on virtually the same day, even though there was nothing before that. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it was Tim Ferriss, you know, like I was like, Oh, well, if Tim Ferriss is doing it. Obviously I should probably do it too. Uh, so I was like, yeah, let's do, let's do a podcast. What so, year was that when you started? 2015. Oh, I thought uh, you'd been around longer than that. Yeah, it was, I think, February or March or really? no, April maybe. Yeah, so early 2015, or early 2015 
and it was like two weeks. I was just like, Hey, I should do a podcast and just kind of <laughs> grinded it out. And two weeks later I had a podcast uh-huh. and I set the goal that I was going to do it every week because consistency is key. And I don't think I've missed much. I mean, there might've been one or two I missed weeks wise in the last three years, but yeah, that was kind of like, I just used that and I didn't really use YouTube. And I looked at it as like, man, the amount of effort that goes into a podcast for making a video, like it doesn't seem scalable to me on the YouTube side, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, it depends on what your content is. Like, I think yours are very scalable, but like creating a hunting show, man, that seemed like that's a ton of work for yeah. what's coming out of it versus a podcast. And so I was like, Oh, you know, yes, I'll get there. But it's not, like, it just, I think it's about, you know, how you operate. And like, this goes into like, Oh, should I start a blog? Should I start a YouTube channel? Should I start a vlog? Should I start a podcast? It like, I think it boils down to like, what are, what are you going to do consistently? Yeah, I'm just not a video type person. I don't have those skills. Like, you know, you look back at, you know, Cody was filming hunts in 2007 and you know like he has the experience he has that 10,000 hours in that field and so for him to create the YouTube is it makes perfect sense you know and for me it was like I had tons of audio experience because I was basically listening to the audio books and podcasts nonstop for like five years so I'm like Mm -hmm. oh perfect you know and you know whether that's like that interview skill kind of just it gets ingrained in your head but I've been listening to it for years and so you know for me it was like that made more sense to me and I, you know, I think people, kids, they want to get into this and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. What's the best? Well, do it. Yeah. whatever you're going to do, you know, whatever you're going to excel at. And if, if, if you don't know, try it all and, and kind of work out the kinks. But, you know, for me, it was always, you know, yeah, I could be on YouTube. And even at this at today, I'm going to say this because we should be on YouTube and we should be doing a lot more than that than we are. But at the same time, it's like, it's, it's the resources, you know, I'm like, can I afford to you know, be doing all of these other things. And I'm sure, you know, it'd be great if I had a hunting show on Amazon and I had, you know, a different show on Netflix and I, but like, again, it boils down to resources and like what, what your end goals are and things like that. And so I think, you know, a lot of people want to jump into this, but they don't know where to jump in. Uh, you know, so it's just whatever works for you. Like, what are you going to produce the best? I, I think you nailed it. And so if you're a busier guy or you don't have a lot of time, maybe a podcast would be better because it yeah. takes me three times to four times more uh, time to edit yeah. and upload a YouTube video. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's way easier to do this. Way easier. I mean, and, and uh, you know, a lot of people probably say like, oh, well, do you think it's, uh, you know, crowded? Like, what's your thought? Do you think YouTube's crowded? Do you think yeah, uh, uh, podcasts are crowded? That's a good question. I was actually going to ask you that same thing. Um, I I think, and I've said this before, I think it's the market is super duper saturated with guys that aren't serious or aren't committed or aren't willing to treat it like a business uh, that are, that are flashes in the pants. You know, you'll see them go or the guys that have their Facebook 15 pro staff things, which if that's what they want to do and that's the level that they want to be into it, Mm -hmm. but they act like they're serious They act like it's a business. And it's just really, it's just kind of this weird thing. Uh, I think it's saturated for guys that aren't serious, but for guys like you, I think it's not saturated. I think there's plenty of room. I think for guys that are willing to outwork and get above that, um, you know, that, that was one of my questions is how do you stand out from the, from the saturation? Cause I think there's this huge freaking just pool of all this stuff down here and, and God bless those people. They're great people. They just don't serious. So they don't have the work ethic to make it mm-hmm. or they're not long-term oriented. So how do you stand out above all those guys? Cause I've had that problem myself, you know, like I've had a little bit of growth, but man, I mean, not, not where I want to be. It's never as fast as we want to be. Right. But no. And I think it's like you, it's tough because I, I look at like the, a lot of the podcasts coming into it and that's going to saturate the market. But at like the same time you said, like, I, I do think there are flashes in the pen and, and you know, I, like I've told you, I said, the guys that can make it past 60 episodes. Okay. Now we're talking, we're interested because it's a lot of work to get to 60 or a hundred episodes. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you're going to get paid until then. And it's only going to get tougher for the guys coming in because you know, before you might've been able to get paid at say episode 50, cause you could churn enough audience. But now as the, as that, as that pond grows and the number of fish grows in that pond, it's going to get tougher and tougher to, to find that food source. So you know, it, it can be tougher, but at the same time, you know, everyone has their own personality. Everyone has their different little quirks. And I, I think it's tough because you, you have to kind of find your own rhythm and your own personality, but mm-hmm. that's truly what people are going after. You know, people listen to different shows that could be based on the same thing 
based on their personality. Take marketing, for example. I mean, if you looked in the business category of podcasts, it is insane. I mean, you would have thought for sure that everything that had ever been thought about has been done in a podcast, but yet mm -hmm. there's still, you know, shows popping up and doing well because it's their personality or their delivery or, you know, their, their little quirks that make them them. Uh, and I think the same is true. Uh, what you do have is a lot of people who tend to just copy what else, what else is out there and not kind of put their own spin on it. Maybe they don't have enough of their own voice or haven't decided that. So, mm -hmm. you know, they look at born and raised and there's going to be a lot. And Cody's had copycats since the day he started. Yeah. Uh, and he'll tell you like he kind of got his style from on foot films, but I would say right. that he has developed his own style yet. You see a lot of people copying what he does, which, you know, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Right. But you know, if you don't try to be your own voice and do your own thing, you're just that other born and raised, you know? And so like, you'll see that a lot of that and guys try to do that. Um, the hunting public is a good one. They just popped up and they definitely have their own voice, like right out the gate. Uh, they're doing awesome. They're doing cool stuff. And you know, they're very open. They're not trying to be anybody else. They're kind of, I'm sure there's, you know, YouTube guys out there like, Oh, they're just like so-and-so yeah. they're going to correct me on this. But like, from my perspective, you know, I'm like, Oh man, that's interesting. They're doing cool stuff. They're doing like their own little vibe. Uh, and so they do well. And you know, that's one that kind of popped up that caught my eye. Uh, I, too. I was actually going to bring that up because they were like born and raised, but for whitetail. Yeah. And I didn't but they, realize but a little bit different. I don't think yeah. like, I don't, I don't look at them and say, Oh, they copied Cody at all. No, I, it's, the dynamic is different, but like the hunting, the different States. Yeah. yeah. Thing, like you got the, the icon deer tour. Uh, mm -hmm. whoever, uh, um, I forget who those guys are called. Um, they were just on Instagram. Uh, anyways, they've got the mule deer tour thing, the icon mm -hmm. tour. And then you got the, these guys with the, with the, it seems like the hunting multiple States is what I meant. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In, in recording it. But yeah, I've watched their videos and they're, um, so down to earth and so like, I feel like they're just the everyday guy with a camera in their hand, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's, it's, uh, I really like them. I haven't watched a lot of it, but the episodes that I did watch, it was pretty cool. It was really cool. But it's interesting how they can kind of come on the scene, which seems to be from out of nowhere and have their own voice and be kind yeah. of like, where did they come from? <laughs> I mean, I, I never heard of them. And then I looked them up on YouTube and they had like a hundred thousand subscribers. It's like, where yeah. did that come from? <laughs> so it just shows it's doable for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so for, for starting out, where was your starting out? I mean, you started out in Oregon. Now you said you're in Montana. Mm -hmm. Like what kind of growth did you have in the beginning and, and how did you stay consistent? How did you get to the point where you're at now? It's a good question. I had this, that same conversation I had yesterday. We were talking about like, you know, what was the big thing that, that made it? And I think it goes to like what you said, it's consistency. You know, I started out, I, I, wasn't doing this to make a dollar you know i was kind of you know a doing it because i wanted to learn more it literally was like ah, magazine articles aren't enough i will just there's questions i gotta ask and and so like it started from there but also networking and like so it just kind of grew from there and networking networking was huge for me i think you know if i would have had to put it back to that and just consistency and and you know there was a lot of times in the beginning where i'd look at other stats and i would think god you know like i'm not where I should be or so-and-so was bigger and like, I do that. man, it, it's, <laughs> I, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. And I, I can tell you like when you're early on, you're like, you know, what am I doing? Like, why is this person, you know, more popular? Why am I not getting more subscribers? And you have to like always check back and be like, okay, why am I doing this? I'm doing it for the long game. I'm doing it because here's where I want to be. And so does that matter right now? No. It doesn't. And like, this is not why I'm doing it. Cause I think there are a lot of things you can do to get more subscribers that mm -hmm. are going to hurt you more in the long run than the things, you know, doing the, the right thing and just kind of working on that slow pace. Right. And I think that's really important. And that was, I think has helped me if you want to look back and say in a, in a, and three years isn't that long. So who knows, maybe it all crashes tomorrow. But mm -hmm. uh, if you look at like, you know, what's helped on a three year scale, I think it's the, it's that being consistent and not worrying about, you know, next week's show winning, you know, the, the iTunes top of whatever. Yeah. I think it's consistently trying to, you know, produce a good show and just consistently getting better, but not necessarily worrying about trying to be the most famous or, you know, make more dollars. I spent a lot of time, you know, trying to make, make it profitable, you know, and trying to find the sponsors and trying to do that. And that was, you know, you spent a lot of time doing that. And I think as I unfortunately was able to, 
not worry about that as much. And I think when I stopped worrying about it, they tend to just fall on top of each other. You know, it's really? like now, now people are more interested. They're approaching you. Yeah. And That's it's, you know, it's limited space now and things are bigger, but you know, the, it seems like the less you think about it, looking back on it, the less you think about it, the, the easier it is to come by that, you know, the easier things fall into place. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's, you know, maybe you're just worrying about different things. You're, you're focusing on creating a better content. And that's, you know, as moving forward, it's like, that's the conversations we're having. Like, okay, how do we make it better? How do we make it exponentially better? You know, here's what we're doing well. Here's what we could do better. How do we get there? How do we move forward? What's moving forward look like? That's interesting. I want to, you made one point kind of, uh, you know, having the slow, steady growth then versus kind of just being that rocket ship and yeah. I, and comparing, cause I know everybody does that <laughs> and I am yeah. horrible, dude. That's one of my biggest flaws is, you know, we're humans. Dude. How many, subs, how many subs is this guy at or how many followers, how many likes did that guy get? Yeah. Like, I'm bigger than him and he got more likes. That's, you know, that's what the hell's yeah. going on. You know, and, dude, vanity metrics, man. <laughs> dude, I am, I am on my YouTube analytics. Like, 10 times a day. Cause I want to know, I just want to know, like it's, I hate uploading a video cause that just means I'm going to spend hours on my phone checking YouTube analytics. You know, like I, you ever, I you ever heard that. the term, like don't look at the scale when you're trying to lose weight. I have, I have, you know, and I should you know. put just delete <laughs> YouTube analytics. I really should. But the point I want to make is cause there's another guy that, that started a little bit before me, just a little bit, but he's like it. 20 something. I haven't, I quit checking his, his stuff. So it's been a while, but last time I checked him, he was like at 20,000 subs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in my opinion, not near is, is, uh, quality information. Like a lot of the shit he's telling people's off. Um, yeah. but he's growing, he's growing really good. He's better, better, uh, editing software, better, better, you know, uh, visual content but the information is just not as good in my opinion. And, uh, I compared myself, compared myself. And then I found out the other day, I'm like, you can buy subscribers. You can buy, okay. you can buy likes. I'm like, huh, there's no way. I'm like, I, all my shit's legit. You know, like I pay, yeah. uh, the I social boost guys. I still, I still with them. And, uh, it's, you know, 25 bucks a week or something like that. And that, you know, that to me, that's investing and that's actually actual growth. It's not fake. And uh, I had that whole conversation with Taylor before I gave him any money. I'm like, this isn't like BS. This, this is legit. And then he's like, yeah, dude. I'm like, All right, I'll try it for a week. And I'm still with them. So, but my point is, is like, you gotta be, gotta be careful what you're comparing because how legit is that person? Number one, number two, what are they doing that you're not? Are they buying subscribers? Are they outworking your ass? Are they, are they providing more of a value? I mean, you just got to stay in your lane. And that's something that I, I've really, I've really preached on and I, and I tell myself all the time, you just got to put the blinders on and stay yeah. in your lane and just go like quit paying attention to all that crap. I got guys that compare themselves to me that I'm helping grow. I'm like, dude, you got, you know, thousand views your first day. I'm like, dude, I do the same shit to born and raised. I got my first million views. I finally broke a million views. Cody broke a million views in one month. Like <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's all, like you said, it's all scale. You got to quit comparing yourself. Like I get motivated by that because I, if they could do that shit, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the room in any room I walk into. It don't matter. Like if I can do this, so can you. And if born and raised can do it, so can I. And if Cody rich can grow his podcast to the, as big as it, so can I, you know, like it's just, yeah. it shows people what can be done. Not that it can't be, you know, in my opinion, I think it's, an, I think it's important to remember that, nice guys finish last. They just might be down at halftime. And so <laughs> it's easy to look at guys. And I was the same way. There was other podcasts when I was coming up that were bigger, they were more popular. They were huge. And I was like, ah, you know, like this, it just, it makes you mad and you get you frustrated about it. But you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease sometimes, but then the wheel falls off <laughs> when the bearings go out. So, and you see that a lot. And, and I really do like, it's, you got to play the long game. You got to do the right thing all the time and you got to move in the right direction. Now, can you learn from some of the things you do, they do, or, you know, your competition does? Yeah. Is it, are analytics healthy? Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm not like against analytics and just keep doing what you're doing because you might be going down the wrong road and you, you might need to know that, uh, you know, so those are important things and, and looking and you're always innovating and always pushing in the right direction. But I think at the end of the day, you can't worry about, you know, what someone else is doing. Uh, you just got to run your own race. and <laughs> It's in everything. Dude. Like you look at like ultra runners, most ultra runners will tell you, you got to run your own race. And if you try to beat your, 
your competition, you're going to lose. And it's the same way, man. Like, look at what you want to do. Like, if you're like, okay, my goal is to get my wife to be able to fund my wife to work or not work, whether she wants to or not. Uh, and, and to be able to hunt as much as I want to take my kids hunting to like, to provide this life that I think I I can produce. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. So just work towards that. It doesn't matter if someone else is doing it too. Cause guess what? You know, like Cody can have a YouTube channel and you can have a YouTube channel. It's not an and it's right. not an or it's an and, you know, you both can have it. Right. And so like, this is like Cody and I pr- promote the hell out of each other and we do things for each other. Cause like uh, he can do his thing. I mean, people can watch both of our shows and I'm happy to help promote him, happy to help promote other podcasts and things like that. Yeah. You know, like most people listen to more than one podcast. So yeah. You know, doing those things will get you there. And I think that's that's hugely important and not to worry about, you know, the small analytics and things like that. Absolutely. Let's put it this way. If if there was room or uh, let's say if you look at it like a pie and everybody's fighting over the same pie, it would have been over yeah. with Hushin. It would have been over, <laughs> gritty. you know, it yeah. would have been, it would have been, the pie would have been gone a long time ago. And from a very successful business guy, he's like, you know, guys that have small minds or, or guys that are just stuck in the employee area he's like they think of pies and if you take that piece of the pie that's one they're not going to get he's like i look at it like i'm a baker and i'm making my pie and we're just creating a bigger market for everybody else and he's like yeah you know it creates more competition but you have to think of that think out of it like you're creating your own pie you're you know that's why collaborations work that's why collaborations are huge that's why when i when i get anytime i can i get offers to work with born race i've only got like two podcasts and then the arrow episode Mm-hmm. Um, I jump on that shit. I'll take a day off work because yeah. that is worth it. You know, that's why Hushin and Born and Raised. That's why you and Born and Raised. That's collaborations are the mother of all growth, in my opinion. Like, yeah. I, I think they are fantastic. And if that was, uh, if collaborations didn't work and all that stuff wasn't true, then yeah, maybe there would be a pie and we'd all be fighting for the same piece. But it's just. It's so, just how like, do you, so I, at someone at your level, how do you, <laughs> what recommendations do you have for creating cl- collaborations? Uh, me personally, you can kick this back to me afterwards, but yeah, I was, I want to ask you that <laughs> question. Cause me, somebody, um, I get guys that want to collaborate, but being able to find something where we can add enough value. Cause a lot of times when somebody asks you to collaborate, they just want your, they mm-hmm. just want you, you know, yeah. to help grow them. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, so collaborations are great. I always ask, what's your intent? You know, like, yeah, it should always be centered around, you know, the end user and stuff, but there has to be growth. I mean, there's got to be a point to really doing it to make it a benefit for both users. And if if both people aren't growing out of the thing, then it's probably not a great collaboration. I've always, always told, you know, being in sales previously, it's, you know, you can have a great deal, but it's not a great, a really great deal unless both parties are happy. Like, Oh, yeah, I just screwed that guy. I got a great deal. Well, if that guy's not going to do business with you in the future, how good would of a deal was that, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, make sure you both have the same intent. Make sure you're both understand prior to going into collaboration what the goals are. But um, I, I, I completely forgot the question where I was going. That went off a rabbit hole. <laughs> how, uh, do you, how, do you, how do you get to collaborations? Like at, at yeah. the level, I'm sure there's a lot of guys that are like, hey, you know, like what's, what's the secret to getting collaborations? With so, Barry? My thing is, first of all, you got to ask. And I'm, I, you know, a guy like me, I'm always down to help people. Like I, I, YouTube, I am an open book podcast. I'm an open book. When I actually start getting sponsors and actually get, start getting private deals, that's when I, you know, that's shit remains private. But that's why I tell people what I make on YouTube. I don't care. That's not coming out of anybody's pocket, but YouTube. And that's everything that I've created. Right. So mm-hmm. if people want to know, you know, any X, Y, Z, I'll tell them. Uh, but for, for collaborations, if you're going to collaborate with somebody, make sure you have the, the stuff down pre pre plan it. Don't just don't go into it willy nilly, make sure there's an end benefit and then criteria for actually collaborating. Uh, I want to see that you're, I, I don't want to be wasting my time, man. I know that sounds douchey. I don't want to be wasting my time with somebody that's going to freaking go quit next week. You know, like yeah. it's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be somebody that's earned it. I, I, took a guy out bear hunting who was hitting me up on Facebook all the time. We're friends today now. Never met the guy, never taken a stranger out hunting, you know, but he, for about a year and a half, almost every day, he was, you know, Hey, how you doing? You know, <laughs> you know asking me questions. He's like, you know, I really like to come up. And I'm like, you know, I talked to my wife about it, took him out, had him kill a bear first half hour. We took him out. He's like got invited to his wedding, you know, like the guy's a great guy. And 
it's just stuff like that. Like, uh, for example, Chasing Moby. Do you know who Chasing Moby is? Huh. He's a smaller guy um, in uh, Medford. And the guy's probably one of the best networkers I've ever met. He got probably, I don't know how many guys, all at one little private bow shoot at his buddy's house. He got me, Blacktail Bandits, the Bear, bear, hunt, uh, bear Bow Hunter, himself. Like he got all these guys in social media connected. And now everybody's like collaborating and helping each other grow. I just thought that was really cool. Just collaborating with guys like that, you know, that's going to help each other grow. Guys that have, um, you know, I'm not going to go out and, and collaborate with somebody that's smoking pot in their videos or drinking beer or has mm. the keystone, you know, hashtag keystone in their pictures. I'm not going to collaborate with that. It's got to, it's got to be in line with my beliefs and the way I want to project myself, you know? Yeah. Um, but, 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 you know, like some success can come from like knowing what to say no to. And it gets tough because like you want to help yeah. everyone. Like I try to help everyone, but at the end of the day, if I helped everyone, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, you wouldn't have any time for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I have enough irons in the fire that I just kind of got to keep to that. And so it, it gets tough. I got, I could get it. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of guys out there like, Hey, I don't know how many emails a week we get that are like, Hey, we sh Hey, you should do a podcast with me. I, you know, like, no offense. I don't know who you are. Like, I don't, I honestly don't follow social media as much as people think. Uh, you know, so I'm just busy and, you know, I'll glance at it a few times, you know, throughout the day or answer questions when I can, but it's like, I don't sit there all day and just scroll through social media. So I don't know a lot of these people. And so it's like, Hey, you should have me on a podcast. Like, I, who are you? Like, well, mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't even answer that because there's just too many of those. Well, let's put Whereas, it this way. What was the, what's, what was the catalyst for you working with somebody smaller like me? What, what, what was the. It goes back to like, you know, like you, you had talked about like, Hey, putting in the work, like you probably, what, when's the first time you hit me up about something? Back in June. At so least. probably first time you hit my radar. Right. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this kid's, you know, into starting it, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Starting a podcast. Like it's, I see that a lot. So yeah. I like note it, but you're like, okay, now he's working on board rays and doing this. He's like, he's grinding. Right. And like, okay, I check out your YouTube channel. Like, Oh, he's got some good stuff. Like he knows what he's talking about. I like his style. And so like, to me, when it boils down to it, it's a matter of working with people who I think are going to be there in the long game. Mm -hmm. So who's going to be around 10 years from now, who's going to be the players 10 years from now. And that's, you know, working with them. And I, you know, it's me looking at the long game of who's going to be there in the long game. You know, I want to help those guys. Uh, but going back to like, you know, Hey, you're trying to collaborate, you know, the guys saying, Hey, get, put me on your podcast. As you know, like creating content, you, you produce, you know, we produce three shows a week for me to like to do that. Like I, I run out of content. Right. And so like, if someone kicked me like, Hey, I've never heard this on a podcast. I would love to talk about this. Here's why I'm next or blah, blah done what's your like let's set it up here here's my go-to meeting you know calendar here's whatever and, and it's, it's that simple you know like here you're taking the work off that person and so my advice to other people would be like mate how do we make it easy and how do i provide 51 percent value so say i wanted to be on your show and i'm like i know your content inside and out i'm like hey you haven't talked about this i think this would be a great topic for your audience it would mm -hmm. provide a lot of value and here's my talking points blah 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 you're going to be like, yes, you just saved me a lot of work of coming up with the next idea. <laughs> yeah. And you laid it out there in a, you know, a, a very presentable proposition. Right. Yeah. And if you said no, like, okay, cool. No worries. And then recircle it or whatever. Yeah. I think a lot of guys uh, don't, I mean, it's so simple when you really think about it, but you know, it's, it's not something that people <laughs> tend to do. Right. So it's a matter of doing that. And I think when it comes to like going back to like collaborations, I think it's just a matter of, for me, uh, you know, who's going to be there? Who can I help? I want to help people. Uh, but again, I, I like your idea. Like they got to put in a little bit of the work. I'm they not do. just going to hand it to people. Yeah. I mean, uh, the guys that I, you know, there's a huge glob of guys down in Medford that are, that are trying to get into the industry and, and all of them, I, you know, I'm proud to call them friends. Like they've done some really cool stuff for veterans and stuff, taking them out hunting and, and as juicy as it, as it sounds, I look at that like time spent, like, not only just developing a friendship, but that's also an investment. You know, that's mm -hmm. an investment because if they, if they do grow and they do get huge, I'm going to want to work with them anyways. You know, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm placing my bets in people. If I'm spending time with you, it's because I believe in, in that person. It's because I believe in the long run, like you said, long term, I can't be spending time with flash in the pants. I can't, I don't have enough time. My wife tells me all the time, like, I've been telling her of ideas and projects I want. She's like, dude, stop. You're, <laughs> you're not a professional plate spinner. You know, you're going to start yeah, yeah. 
yeah, he's like just because like, I was I was gonna do Operation Bless a Hero uh, 2.0 this year because we've done one in the past where we get a, a, a bow shop to give us a super good deal and we we just give away the bow to a veteran law enforcement you know Operation Bless a Hero and so like, you don't have time for that, Garrett. Like stop, yeah. like focus. He's like when you become more successful, that's when you can have time for that. I'm like okay. You know, it's like, I just want to help too many people, but at the same time, you got to say no. And, and you said that, and, and, I, and I struggle with that personally saying no to people. I'm up yeah. until midnight, one o'clock on Instagram, messaging people almost every night, like just, yeah. yeah, you know, you can do this or you can do this or try this, you know, poundage, you know, or whatever, you know, just constantly yeah. doing that. But I look at that like time spent as an investment because time, that is, that is your most valuable thing I think anybody has is time. I mean, all your money spent, you know, trying to get time, all your money going to work is so you can have money to go do things you want with your time. Vacation is so valuable for people. I mean, they made it a law, paid time off in Oregon. That's a law. You know, <laughs> time is your most valuable resource and, and being able to say no is going to be one of your most valuable things in my opinion, because it's going to keep you from working with people that you probably shouldn't be. But, yeah. And I think the other thing, it's interesting if we're on the, on the thread of uh, kind of getting it, I hate the term getting into the industry. I prefer to like, I don't know, there's no good term. Like you can't like, it just feels dirty. Doesn't it? Yeah, it feels like, I don't know, it's just shady, but it's like doing what you love. I don't care what it is, uh, you know, whether it's the gun industry, the hunting industry, no matter what it is, like it's an mm -hmm. industry, I guess you call it like, Hey, doing what you love and getting paid for it. I think people underestimate, you know, they, they see everyone doing it and so it's easy to replicate but it, it's the the formula of like hey get famous and people pay you and i don't think that's the only formula i'd like to like see more people like okay how do i how do i just make money doing what i love and what's that look like and so as we see a lot of people building podcasts youtube's like okay that's that's an easy formula like hey get famous people give you stuff money whatever it is and you get to go do those things and be that character mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of other ways to do it though that's what's interesting to me that's that's a good point and and like i said how many celebrities can we have in the outdoor industry i mean <laughs> that's yeah. good to get i mean i don't know man I, I and why would you want to be a celebrity you couldn't go anywhere in peace you couldn't eat i mean if i saw jim shockey you bet your ass i'd take out my phone and take a selfie with him like yeah. i'm a chump like that I, you know if i saw so and so i'm like i'm gonna get at least try and say shake his hand you know like yeah. <laughs> i don't know if i want that you know i, I don't know and there's there's got to be everybody's they want to be the guy right and, yeah. and the way to put it is you know you see jim shockey well are you willing to do what got jim shockey there and for most people they say yes but really it's a no because that guy went through you interviewed him and i was so pumped about that because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge jim shockey fan. and uh you know not everybody is going to be willing to do what that guy did to get where he's at michael jordan is michael jordan because michael jordan did what michael jordan was willing to do yeah. Not really anybody is willing to do what Michael Jordan did. To get, I, I've heard stories about that guy growing up that he couldn't dribble with his left hand and how just what he did to be able to get the fundamentals. LeBron James is LeBron James for a reason. Cameron Haynes is Cameron Haynes because that guy's fucking insane. No one's willing to do what he's willing to do, right? Yeah. If you want to be these guys, you got to be willing to give up what they've given up and do what they've done. I mean, that's period. While all being so. Which is interesting too because like – you got to make some hard choices because to be at that level, and I think everyone wants to be at that level, but man, the sacrifices are steep there. And you want to talk about like, Hey, you know, not just leaving your kids home with the wife. Like yeah. <laughs> Jim Shockey is probably you know like <laughs> gone more than he's, he's definitely gone more than he's home. And like, so you got like, not only are you willing to outwork the competition, like are you willing to out sacrifice? And that's, man, that's tough. And I think it's interesting to watch how the levels just keep growing. You know, yeah. like what you, what is, what is cool yesterday is like average, you know, now and what can't, you know, Cameron Haynes is, just, you know, running, doing his thing. And like, it's so next level. It's like, I, how is someone going to top that? Like I was someone going to be like, yeah, I run 24 hours a day for a month straight. You know, like, what are you sat? Like at what point is it? Man, yeah. Yeah. What are you doing for the rest 11 months of the year? He's sitting on the yeah. couch. You know, this guy yeah. does, this guy lives that he lives yeah. that. And I, and that's where, you know, you got to find your niche and you got to be yourself. It gets exhausting when you're not being yourself. I've tried, you know, taking bits and pieces from other people that make them successful and making this weird, you know, back when I was trying to figure myself out and I'm like, 
that's exhausting, man. You just got to be. Do you think you found your voice yet? Huh? Do you think you found your voice, quote unquote? Very recently, I do. Uh, I did an episode that was uncut. I thought I knew my, you know, I knew my demographics. I knew male to female ratios, all this stuff. I knew my audience, right? Well, I did this <laughs> uncut the other day. And if you haven't tell, I'm a little bit looser with my language on my podcast now. I did this <laughs> uncut. And the uncut, I did an unedited version and an edited version of the same podcast. Yeah. It was a blacktail episode. And the unedited version outperformed it by, I think now it's actually doubled the other one's numbers. Really? And it was like, why is that? Because it was unedited. People are tired of, you know, people don't care if I say shit on the podcast. And like, right. I was like, I would edit that out. I would do this, you know, granted you got to keep it. You pull the reins back. You can't get crazy. Cause that could cost you partnerships in the future. You guys aren't going to want to partner with somebody that sounds like they have Tourette's, but um, <laughs> you know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta keep it within reason, right? Bring your brain with yeah. you. But unedited, it was just guys ate that shit up, man. Like they loved it. Like they, the conversation, I didn't get any compliments on the unedited one. Everything I got was on the edit or on the edit. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. All the compliments were on the unedited one. I didn't get anything on the edited version. Um, I got, you know, three or 400 downloads, you know, that's yeah. average for me, which is another area I want to ask you about. Um, but the other one, like literally doubled the other one's numbers. It was really weird. And I uploaded them at the same time. Yeah, that's interesting. And I think authenticity is, is growing and we've seen it in the last few years, but I don't think any, I think it's very underestimated. Uh, and it's, it's hard because I feel like when you're not anybody or you're new, you like, you feel like you got to have a slightly polished. And I don't think I ever needed a, a polished version. I think from the get go, you know, <laughs> I was very much a Tim Ferriss fan and I knew that Tim Ferriss is, he is unpolished on purpose. Like he goes out of his way to make sure you, you realize he's unpolished. And I like that, you know, and that's what people like about Tim. And I, I tried to be that from the beginning. And I think you still come off as polished. It's really hard to not be right. And, you know, I asked you if you had found your voice and it's interesting because I, you would ask me that uh, episode 100 and I was like, yeah, I probably found my voice, you know, in the, <laughs> the 50th episode. And then I'm, you know, episode 200, I'm probably like, Oh, it probably wasn't until the hundredth episode. Really? And now we're like 300 deep. And I really don't know when I found, you know, like it's hmm. slowly, but I have the wherewithal to know that probably in, in another 50 or hundred episodes, I'll look back and be like, I didn't I, have it. <laughs> I didn't even have it. Done. Yeah. And you know, when, when I hit a hundred, you should probably call me and be like, Hey, did you find it? <laughs> yeah. And I'm probably like, no, <laughs> I, I guarantee I didn't have my, my, like I, you know, voice quote unquote, or like grow into like who you're going to be. And that's an ever changing thing. And so I, but I definitely was very scripted, very polished that's in a way first one to a hundred for sure. Yeah. Well, like when we started this conversation, I don't know if it's going to make it in the podcast because we were just, I just hit record when we started talking. Uh, uh, you know, I was like my first like bunch of episodes, all the ums were edited out. I even did yeah. it for the guests, right? I was like, I want them to sound the best they can, you know, like, yeah. and then I'm like, why am I doing this? This is exhausting. I'm like, I'm, I told myself I'm not going to do this. This is what having a podcast is because <laughs> this is not fun. Yeah. And I got so good. I could look at a sound bar and I could tell you where the ums were without listening at it. Cause it's a, it's oh, yeah. a, a little hump. Right. Yeah. And uh, so anyways, like it may be, you know, maybe just cause here's an example, like Royce Chambers, the bow hike podcast, um, yeah. friend of mine wasn't a friend until he reached out and said, Hey, I'm, you know, for lack of better words, I don't think he said fan, but he's like, I, I like to follow you. You know, you're, you know, you're a local guy. I'm a local guy. Let's go shoot. So we went and shot and, uh, he helped me out with hoodoo cause he wanted to just hang out. So he helped me. I would have been so screwed without him. Go to hoodoo, set up my booth, podcast and everything up there. And when we get back, um, he's like, dude, you cuss. I was like, yeah. Like, he's like, you don't do that. And you're he's like, I was, so, I was watching my language the whole time I was around you. He's like, dude, you're, you're like, you're so forgetful and you cuss all the time. I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's me. Like, I'm like, I, and I'm, I've done such a horrible job of maybe coming through on, on the podcast is that I've been afraid, you know, like I wanted to be so polished, so clean, so cut, you know, like, yeah. and now like after the unedited, I don't hardly edit my, my podcast anymore. And my best friend told me that on episode one, he's like, I listened to you. He's like, don't stop doing that. <laughs> like, you know. That's interesting. Yeah. He knew That's he's like, guys don't want to hear you. He's like, guys will listen to you. He's like, guys will listen to you more if you quit doing that shit. I'm like, 
Yeah, if you if you just if you're you, I I think it's I think we underestimate how much we can read a person's language. Like you're just talking to your buddy, right? Like if you and I were shooting bows and we're just bullshitting, and you know, and that's the conversation we're having our brains are really good at picking that up and perceptually. And, and like we put this filter up when this guy's like, well, Garrett, this is how it's going to be today. And we're going to yeah. do this. And like, we're so tired of that. Right. And so like, I think we don't even realize that we recognize the difference between two dudes having a conversation mm-hmm. and two dudes having an edited scripted podcast. Yeah. And this, is, this is a conversation. This yeah. is, this is going to be a great, I'm going to call it right now. It's going to be a great episode. Guys are going to love it. Cause you and I have never talked before, but we're talking like we've been friends for fucking years, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I the, well, going back to that, you were talking about like, uh, the like unedited, whatever. So when we started, I had this idea that I just want to record what was going to happen for my hunting season. Like I was like, I could just turn a mic on and see what's going to happen. And I was like, worst case, I don't ever produce it, but it's, you know, it'll be cool to look back, uh, yeah. later and whatever. And so, I hit that thinking, I hit record thinking like, oh, we could, we could make a one hour podcast out of this. And when we got done, I don't remember how many hours and hours of audio it was. And, and realistically, I got back from my first trip. It was a ter- not terrible, it just wasn't like this action packed thing that was gonna make sense. And I, like, I told John, I'm like, let's just, let's just kick it out. I was like, listen to it first. And if I'm not crazy, I think we should just put it out there. I don't know. I don't know where we're going with this. Uh-huh. But I almost don't want to know the end before I start producing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I want this to be like, I have no idea where this is going and neither does anyone else, but this is, you know, this is what's happening. It's a, you're documenting versus creating. And you hear Gary talk about that all the time. And I was like, okay, let's just do that. And I didn't even listen to it because I knew it was bad. I didn't, uh, you know, like, <laughs> Uh, just thinking back a few times being like, I don't know if I should, yeah, I might want to edit that out. And I was like, I don't want to be the guy that edits it. Cause I don't, I'll pull stuff out that I don't probably shouldn't be pulled out. And so we went into this, like no idea where we're going, no idea what it's going to look like, but let's just hit, you know, send, let's just ship it and see what happens. What's the worst. You know, I don't think everyone's going to drop off the podcast, mm-hmm. but it turned out really good. Having said that, apparently I was cussing like a sailor while I'm hunting by myself, uh, which I did get some comments. And so I respect the old timers. Like uh, I could go on a long tangent about cussing, but you know, I, I respect some of the old timers and some of the people are like, Hey, we'd love to listen to your podcast, but I got kids in the car. So I can't. Uh, um, yeah. See, I'm, I'm worried about that myself. And like, as someone who respects their elders a lot, it was tough for me and I've it, it stung a little because there were some old timers that were like, you know, hey, you know, blah, 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 give me a rap. <laughs> that was tough. Uh, but then there was guys who were like, oh, I wouldn't change it a damn thing, <laughs> you know? And so it, you do, it, it's tough. And you, I'm sure you'll get this. Like you'll, you'll start cussing on the podcast. And, and I think the limited amount is fine, but sometimes the old timers will. Yeah, it's really weird. Here's, tell me what you think about this. Cause I, in a YouTube video have never cussed and will not cuss in a YouTube video, but on the podcast, it's very good. Is it against YouTube? No, I just, I just like, I I have this thing in my head where it's like, I don't want this kid to be learning about archery. Like, cause I have, and then have, you know, me saying, blah, 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 blah. And what what are you watching Billy? You know, get that guy off your TV, you know, like, but it's literally the same I don't know. Why is it? Why is that fair? Why is the podcast fair game? And why is the YouTube channel not? I don't know. I don't know. I I think it depends on content. Well, obviously I don't think there's a whole lot of little kids that are listening to our conversation about this. Um, And if they're over 15, I'm pretty sure they're cussing anyway. Yeah. My, my biggest chunk, what's your big, my, my demographic is uh, my age. It's like, I'm 29. My demographic is pretty much my age. Like I think uh, 40% of my audience is between 28 and 32. I think that's the primary demographic for podcasts right now. Is it? Uh, that's pretty much mine too. I mean, it goes. Mine on YouTube 20, as well. <clears throat> is it? Yeah, I would say 24 to like, it's 24 to 34 or something like that. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Because it's like, that's like my huge thing. I'm like, guys, my age don't care. So I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to cater to the to the masses on that one. But again, I never want to be that guy where somebody's listening to me and then like they shut me off because I'm not being a good influence on the younger, on the younger generation or yeah, or like like you said, I have guys that maybe listen to this with their kid. I've never got a, uh, a complaint. Um, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, cause some, some guys can't listen to the shooting the bull podcast. And I've seen, you know, I love Josh and Ty, but some guys 
won't listen to that with their kids in the car. I wouldn't let my kids listen to Josh and Ty and I've hung out with Josh and Ty a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, you're, are you, is, you know, is, at what point is, is being too uh, open uh, a hindrance? Um, I think there's a, I mean, there's always a line, right? And I think as long as you're hitting the, the masses line, which is, it is tough to say, you know, like obviously if you're dropping 32 F bombs in a podcast, that's probably <laughs> too much. Uh, and if, if you're just being real and candid, I think it's appropriate, you know, like if that's, you're always going to piss some people off and, and some people are going to love it. So yeah. you, like you've probably heard it, you can't please everyone. Right. And I think Tim Ferriss is pretty adamant about, I'm not trying to please everyone with every episode. I'm trying to create the best podcast anyone's ever listened to, to like 10% of my fans. And that really? 10% may change. But if someone listens to a podcast, like, Oh my God, that was, you know, that was the greatest thing. I needed to hear that. Because I think when you try to take your content, this is probably applicable to YouTube or podcasting. You're like, okay, I'm trying to make a content that's going to reach the most amount of people. You're kind of getting a bland piece of content. Whereas if you try to create content that 10% of your audience is going to love and 10% of your audience is going to hate, then you're, you're going to have more people who are, are diehard fans. You're going to get closer to that thousand true fans. Okay. You ever, you ever heard sense. Kevin Kelly's thousand true fans? Mm -mm. So thousand true fans are like the thousand, you have a thousand people that just absolutely love you mm -hmm. and would be willing to pay for what you do. Now it can you get closer to that if you have content that really resonates with people. So if you're trying to create stuff that meets everyone, like you're trying to create content that works for the entire YouTube sphere, right? Like everyone on YouTube is going to love it. No one is going to truly love that piece of content. If you're just creating something that everyone's going to be okay with. But mm -hmm. if you create stuff that's going to reach a certain audience very well, and you can switch that around, you know, like maybe it's a different piece of content every time. That, you know, listening to you say that, I just thought of one video I uploaded. It's literally my most popular video on YouTube. It's my most liked video, and it's also my most disliked video. It's got the most, most views, most comments, most everything. I made the most off that video. I made over a grand off of that one video. Wow. And um, What's it about? It's just bow comparisons. Oh, okay. I wasn't pulling punches. <laughs> I, shot, <laughs> I shot three uh, flagship bows. It might have been four flagship bows. No, it was three. And it was last year's, last year's Hoyt, Bowtech, and uh, Matthews. And I'm so unbiased. Like, if I don't like something about a bow, I'm going to tell you about it. Like, it's my opinion, you know? And so I did that. And, you know, the Matthews guys hated me. The Hoyt guys probably hated me too. And the Bowtech guys probably hated me because I never, I, don't, I won't stroke a, a Bowtech either. Uh, oh, she probably can't hear me. There's somebody in the uh -huh. back. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she like stuck her head out and then like back up. Uh, you know, my thing is, is like I've joked around, but I'll never be sponsored by a bow company because if they come out with a bad bow that year, I'm gonna let people know. Like, I'm not. Gonna that's that's interesting you say that, and I think it's important. Uh, you know, you've probably heard the term like whenever you see yourself on self on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. One of the things, if you watch say Snyder. So Aaron's not really sponsored by anyone. Um, so he's willing to give his honest opinion. Right. And so it'll be interesting. And I, I've thought about this a lot and I'm kind of, I'm kind of on the wrong side of the fence on this, but you know, it's something that crosses my mind. So I'm curious what you think, but you know, everybody in the industry is got sponsors and that's kind of the go-to, right? It's like, Oh, well you get sponsored by Matthews and you get a free bow and you get, mm -hmm. you know, sponsored by first sight and you get first sight gear. But if everyone's doing that, the guy that can be authentic, like when you do that bow video, that's unheard of, right? Like mm -hmm. nobody's going to bash you, their thing. Cause they're trying to get paid by Matthew someday or they're trying to get paid by Hoyt someday. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You made a thousand dollars off of that video. You could have bought a new boat. Yeah. Yeah. I bought, yeah. I told, uh, when I recorded this, I'm like, man, this video someday is going to pay for itself. And then, uh, it's, yeah. it was like probably three hours worth of work. Yeah. It's, but yet you know, people will stroke the ego of Matthews or Hoyt or whoever the flavor of the week it. is I don't because get they're going to get a free bow. Yeah. And so I, I do see that as being, you know, advice to guys coming up, like, man, you know, I'm kind of, and it's hard because a lot of mine, like say sponsors or whatever, like first light I've known Kenton, I met Kenton in 2008 before I was in the hunting industry or anything. Mm -hmm. 
and became friends and he's a good guy and, and we started uh had the ammo company and so i was trading him ammo for a camel way back in the day that's right uh, I don't even think that, I don't know if that's legal or not, but we did it. <laughs> um, but we, we were just trading. And so we became good buddies. And so then like that relationship is hard for me to, you know, to go anywhere else or do anything else. But I, I do see a huge benefit. If I was coming into industry cold, I would try to be more on the side of authenticity, authenticity than I would be like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, be best friends with the guys that name your product. So I can mm-hmm. get a free product. Right. Well, like the born and raised guys, how many ads do you see them do during their land of the free project? You really don't. I mean, they just wear the gear. People ask questions. Hey, yeah, this is what we're using. Benchmark is probably the only one. Yeah. That's the only one I can think of. I mean, they don't say, yeah, here's my new Hoyt and blah, 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 blah. Maybe, maybe a small Instagram post on it. Yeah. That's, you know, that's about it. And if I was going, you know, okay, here's long-term versus short-term. If I wanted to be sponsored by a bow company, I probably already could be as far as sponsor. Okay. My thing was sponsored. I'm, I'm a little bit older thing. Sponsor is money. And my, you know, when I grew up, if you were sponsored, you were getting paid. Now today it seems like sponsored is getting free products. And I don't know, yeah. I don't know if that's accurate in your opinion, cause you've got way more experience with that stuff than I do. Yeah. And I mean, I a sponsored is free product and like you and i have talked about this like there's just so many players in the game that that now being if you're a company like i work on both sides of it right i have shooters that are sponsored and they get free ammo uh and that's been going on a long time I and mean, there's so many people that are willing to do it that i can just give away free ammo i'm not going to pay anyone why would i pay anyone mm-hmm. like, there's just some kid that's i could give 10 kids with 10,000 followers on instagram free ammo versus trying to pay the guy with a hundred thousand. And right. that's just the, that's the name of the game. It's supply and demand. And there's just enough kids coming up. And so, you know, kids get, people get mad about, it. I don't want to say kids, people get mad about it. Cause like, well, nobody wants to pay. Well, it's just yeah. a supply and demand problem. Right. That's all. How do you, how do you get around that though? Cause uh, you know, I, I've been telling, you know, some, 51% value. 51% value. Go to 51% value. explain on that. Cause I, I, I'm not actually familiar with that term. Like I've never so, heard so if you want something from anyone, you have to create 51% value. So say you want a thousand dollars a month from XYZ company, okay. you better be willing to give them a thousand and one dollars or X, you know, if not more, in like a thousand dollars in return is probably not. So you got to give them $1,500 in value. So if I can go to you, say you own, mm-hmm. I don't know, uh, my phone's in here. So you own the company that, that sells my phone case, right? And I'm like, hey, oh, I'll post on Instagram if you give me $1,000 a month. You're going to be like, you're high. I can give <laughs> $1,000 in phone cases to probably 1,000 people and get more than that, right? So if I was like, okay, well, I can get you in front of my email list that's a million people and converts at 20%, you know, obviously we're, we're talking cash now. Mm-hmm. So, so how do I clearly define it? And which is getting tough because in this, this day and age, like, everyone wants to see these analytics. So no one judges just pure marketing or exposure on anything. So if you can show, you know, that me sponsoring your podcast, like say backcountry fuel box, right? So you want money for my box and I'll be like, okay, show me how you're going to get that money. Uh, So you're going to say, well, you know, know, we have a million people on our email list and a million people following our YouTube channel, or here's what we're going to do. Or you say, Hey, you know, we'll get you in front of, this many people you have to show a dollar value for it so if you can come to me and say hey uh you're going to be in every video we do this year and and everyone's different so you got to learn what they want or don't want because obviously Mm -hmm. you know a lot of companies don't want you to just blatantly be like hey use my code blah 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 blah. and so it's all a matter of just finding out what that company wants and how you can produce value for them Hmm. like if you can and show me the dollar value yeah i'll pay you dollars actual dollars Hmm. but if you're like hey we're just going to put it in your youtube video Think about it from my perspective. How many kids are willing to put Backcountry Fuel Box in their YouTube videos for a free box? A Unlimited amount. Yeah. Unlimited amount, right? Mm-hmm. So how are you going to come to me and say, well, hey, if you give me a thousand bucks, you know, we'll do a video. Well, I can get as many people or um, enough people mm-hmm. to do it for free that I don't need to pay anybody a thousand bucks. That's interesting. So then you, you just go back to the drawing board and say, okay, well, how do I, how do I provide a thousand dollars of value to Cody Rich? You know, like, how do I to the backcountry fuel box or whatever it may be, you know, and like, okay, we're going to do this thing and we're going to get X amount of pictures, you know, you're like, 
it's just a matter of what that company wants or what they need, right? That's really interesting because I've, I've been running into that because as, as I'm trying to grow everything, I'm trying to get more uh, revenue to, to just shove right back mm-hmm. into it, right? Like I'm not going out to dinner with my YouTube money. I, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, I, and I'm struggling here and I'm like offering companies, you know, exposure and for companies that I've done products on, I've, I, you know, uh, I don't know if I should be saying this, but for companies that I've done products on, it's been like one to 2% conversion for actually legit sales, which is 2% is really good. Usually it's like one to a half a percent on YouTube. Yeah. Or, you know. And so that's really good. You know, it sounds really bad, but it's not, not bad. Well, when you get for a certain company, you get, I think one, just one year, it was like 361,000 views that were specifically for that product. And then it's like, okay, you start doing the math. You're like, man, you know, there's a really good value there, you know? And, and I don't have that for a lot of companies and that I, I've been running into that. It's like, man, pro- free products don't pay my bills guys. Like I need, no. I'm, I'm a business just like you are, you know, how can we make this work? And since I've been having that conversation, um, it's really been dead end, dead end, dead end, dead end. And I've had one company that is like, all right, maybe I'll rep your, you know, your stuff for a year if it's good, you know, cause I don't have a lot of experience with it. Let me use it first. If I like it a year from now, we're going to have a conversation where you're actually paying me dollars if it works out because I'm not yeah. going to be getting free products. I'm not going to retire on free products. So, but it also goes back to long game and you, you were talking about who you want to collaborate with. Look at yeah. a business. They're thinking the same thing. Like who is this kid? You know, they don't know. Is he going to be so, around? Is he going to be around? And I can be around like, how do I do long game? And so, you know, companies are looking at it the same way. And it's like, okay, if, if you read this for a year, then we'll talk, you know, like mm-hmm. how much are you doing? And so like playing the long game, that's worked for me. I mean, well, take first light. Obviously there was a little bit different issue there, but I never mm-hmm. asked for anything like really? at all, you know, for it came you. To you? well, it was just kind of like, <laughs> it was more like a, Hey, we should, we should like <laughs> make this a real thing or something like that. It's uh, <laughs> really not much still. It was just like, you know, yeah. you know, when the, the owner and I just kind of had a relationship forever. Yeah. And, but obviously they can look at it as like, Oh, well, Cody's been wearing first life for over 10 years. Uh, I think he's committed to the brand, yeah. you know? And yeah. so I think that adds a lot of value and it's tough because as, as like, you know, a podcaster, a YouTuber, you don't, you don't have a year. You're like, I don't have a year to like just wrap your company for no reason. If you right. fail on me. <laughs> and so like it's, but it, it boils down to a supply and demand issue, man. And that it, that's, sense. that's the inherent problem. So like, how, how are you going to stand out? That's all it is. It's like, how do you provide more value? What can you do that others can't do? I, I have written down right here. Uh, <laughs> show you. How, how do you stand out? <laughs> so, and that's it. Dude, that's, that's simple. <laughs> it's simple. It's simple. It's like, how do you provide 51% of the value? And that's it. That's, that's the secret. That's it makes sense secret. to me. You know, like, it's, it's simple in principle, but obviously like creating that can be hard. Yeah. So, how hard was it for you to get to this point where you're actually, I mean, you're, you're, you don't have a day job. You work for yourself. You're an entrepreneur, right? How long did it take you to make that transition from working for somebody else? Which is, it, it's probably looking the outside, looking in, you're probably like, Oh man, you started this podcast. But realistically it's taken a long damn time. You know, I <clears throat> built my first company. It was actually owned by someone else. And I kind of, I read the four hour work week, started it, built that. And so I spent two years of nights and weekends building that for someone else. And it wasn't until 2012, you know, that I got the opportunity to buy it back or buy it from the, from the owner. And that's when it went full time. And then it was probably another two years of just struggles, you know, and like, mm-hmm. yeah, just learning by failure and trying to work through those things. And so when I built the podcast, it was like my technically second build you know, second company I had built. Um, and then there was like another one in between that failed and, and, you know, went under. And so <laughs> like, I still think I'm making this up as I go. Like I'm not successful by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, it's just, it's a process, dude. It's like, it's, you're learning all the time. And, and I don't think it goes back to like, you're, you're trying to ask me, and it's not technically asking me, but like, you're looking for the answer of like, Hey, when am I going to be successful? Like, when's this all get easier? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, I think the second you learn that it's like a process and it's all just a matter of making it up as you go and there's no end, like you're never going to be successful. Life gets more expensive. You know, you, the kid, you, then you'll have kids and they're more expensive and time yeah. becomes less. And so it's just a, it's a process, you know, like, and it's, I think it's easier because 
for me, when I, I was always just like, man, if I could just get over this hump, I'll be successful. If I could just do this, I'll be successful. And then you realize you're never really going to feel successful. Like there's always the next thing. Yeah. You know, and what is success today looks different than it did for me four or five years ago. And so like, I'm always like, man, if I could just get over that next hump. But once you start embracing that, dude, it's like, it just starts to flow. And then you're like, okay, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. I love building things. Mm -hmm. I love building my own thing. And that's what's, you know, success is to me is like having the ability to do that and just getting to do it every day yeah. and thinking outside the box. So I think when you get there and you're not just looking for like, oh, what is, what is the finish? Where's the finish line at? There's no finish line, man. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep going and the goals keep growing. I love, I love to hear you say that because my, my thing was I've been reaching out to guys that are similar in the industry and, and they have YouTube channels and it says sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. And they, again, every single one of them, like you said, Free doesn't products. mean anything. Free products. <laughs> yeah. None of these guys are making a dollar, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just thinking like, man, you know, I put so much thought into this lately. All that time I could have been putting into making podcasts or making videos instead of just, I don't know. It's, it just seems like a lot of mental masturbation, just hanging around trying to think <laughs> of ways rather than just doing it. You know, dude, I beat my head against the wall for years. Like, <laughs> like, to the point where when you when it comes down to like that's how you pay your mortgage and that was me yeah like 2013 12 yeah 12 13 14 15 it was like trying to figure out how to pay the mortgage it was mm -hmm. like man i need to make sales and you get backed up against the wall and it's it's hard to operate when you're backed up against the wall and you're trying to make short-term gains because right now you're focusing on short-term gains and i've mm -hmm. been there because you're like I got to, I got to make money now. Got to make money now. Whether it's like to pay the mortgage or to do whatever. And mm -hmm. you operate differently when you're backed against the wall versus when you're like, okay, my base income is covered. Now I can do, I can think about bigger things. Think about long-term things. Think of, and like you, you start to grow because you're not backed up against the wall thinking about how I'm going to make a thousand dollars this week to pay the mortgage. You're thinking about like, okay, where's my legacy going? Where's, you know, the whole big picture going, you know, you're looking at, at, clouds and dirt like gary says you know you're looking farther into the clouds and and the dirt dirt kind of just forms itself in front of you and it's it's easier said than done right like you know i've been in your position where you're like man i just need like 100 more subscribers and i could get this or like how am i going to get paid how am i going to get to that thousand dollars a month blah blah blah, yeah. blah and it's tough to even like consider what you know your youtube channel looks like in 10 years yeah. when, when you're just like exactly. man, how do i get paid today yeah so, well, that's but the i think the, the closer you can get to looking long term the, suddenly the dirt starts to form in front of itself yeah well i did start the podcast earlier saying you know i, I didn't care if i made money in the first years like i care i should i should preface that because now we're talking about it and it's important it is important to me right because yeah. you know, bottom line it is important i'm not going to quit because i didn't you know yeah, like yeah. that's that's probably where i should i should preface that because i and that is this conversation develops it's going to sound like that's all i've been thinking about um, but it is but, like that's what makes you keep going or that's what's going to keep the wheels turning right like let's yeah. just say like i'm in business because i want to make money well to me making money doesn't mean shit but it does keep the lights on so i can keep building what i'm building yeah and so like the same thing for you you're starting a podcast you're starting a youtube everyone goes through this you know like do you care about money not really like it's not like you're like oh, i need this money but at the end of the day, you still get like, it takes money to build cool things. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, man, I, I want to do cool things that haven't been done before. You know, I'm looking at podcasts in a new way, doing these long form podcasts and doing these things, but the money is just not there. And so like, I need the money to create more content to kind of build in that direction you want to yeah. build. Right. And so like, you're still thinking about it. It's yeah. Just Cause me, plan. I'm using a $400 laptop. That's four years old. I'm using a demo version of adobe premiere been doing that for three years you know like it's gotten to the point where i've outgrown my equipment and i need nicer stuff now like I hey, need a better just, camera. So you, just so you know <laughs> doing this on my laptop which is the only computer i have i don't even have a desktop uh my laptop's a 2009 and i've <laughs> redone this thing like three times but it's to the point now it's so old I can't update my Mac software. So oh, you're for all Mac, you guys that, you're a Mac yeah. guy? I, oh, yeah. I tried it. I, <laughs> I wanted to chuck that sucker through the window after a week. I, I, had, a, I had a buddy of mine like, here, try this. And if you like it, I'll give you a sweet deal. I, I was going to get that thing for a thousand bucks. Yeah. It was a good one. And I told him like, dude, give me a Dell or give me a, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. Uh, uh, it's all I, I know. I've had a Mac. Really? Oh, yeah. man. You know, everybody, it, 
most of the creators go for max most of them i think once you get used to it i would i i'd highly recommend it if, if someone yeah. wants to get into being a creator learn a mac because i would say that too because <laughs> all, all the guys i'm too far down the, the this windows road <laughs> like i would have to go to college to learn how to learn a minute i can't do it man i <laughs> i'm an old dog in that aspect and you aren't teaching me that trick I, I, I'm not doing it, which is fair i think the programs are like it's it's easier to run a windows these days than it was five six years ago mm. you know for those programs because yeah. there's applicable versions for both so, so I don't know how much more time you, you've got here. I know you've got dinner at five, but I've got a few more questions for you if, you, Go if you've got some more time, man. So yeah. like looking back, um, I'm at about, I started in June and I know we went over, uh, you know, death by analytics, but um, <laughs> for guys that are wondering, you know, where they, where maybe they could be at or where they should be at. I, and when you told me this, it was really um, motivating for me and empowering, uh, you know, I'm sitting at about 20,000, uh, probably 18,000 downloads right now on, on the podcast since June, right? From all the research I've done, a, a podcast episode in its life will get about 500 on average through podcasts throughout the world of podcasting. What was your metrics going into the first year or two? I mean, what, were your, what kind of growth did you have and, and when did you finally start getting some traction? Uh, dude, that's funny. And like, for the record, I don't know if anybody knows. So I started in 2015 and we were doing one show a week and podcasts. This is like before the masses really were listening to podcasts, mm -hmm. which in 2015 was not that early in the game. I mean, podcasts have been around a while. Uh, I remember month. I remember the first time I hit 200 in a month and I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> got it. And I remember like thinking 2000 in a month was wow. amazing. Yeah. I remember that. Um, How far then, into it were you? I mean, it couldn't have been a month or two or three. Maybe it was three or four months. Okay. Say. We'll say three months. You finally hit yeah. 2,000 in the month. I That might be stretching it even, but yeah. That, 2, seems, fast. that seems fast. I, it, it was slow. It was really slow. So yeah. it couldn't have been that much. Maybe it was 2,000 like in the first <laughs> podcast thing okay. uh, <laughs> that I was. But, you know, I think uh, I just looked. I, I, you know, the last time I looked at analytics, man, it was, it had to have been six, eight months ago. I just don't. Really? Look. Yeah, I don't, I don't mm. look at my analytics. Uh, oh, man. There I'm were on. some we did when we looked at the, like uh, the drop off rates for the longer podcasts when we were testing those out. We did mm. the six hour podcast and things like that. Um, but I remember the first time I had Paul Mandel on and we did that podcast, did 75,000 downloads alone. Oof in the first like two weeks and it was like Seriously? holy cow and that's big dude that's really big um that was kind of you know probably like a viral trending youtube video or something like that um, but i think we did two and a half million downloads this year off 115 episodes holy crap <laughs> so holy crap in three years it's gone from 200 to 2.5 million <laughs> i you so, know i wouldn't i wouldn't be sad <laughs> <laughs> But it does. What I want to. What I want to get with that is not like, hey, we're boo, whatever. What I want to get at that is like, don't let it change you. It doesn't change anything for me. It really doesn't, man. Like, at the end of the day, am I like, can I provide that value to uh, to the, the the sponsors that are paying for the podcast? Mm -hmm. And that's what's all. That's really the only metric that matters is can I provide this value in some capacity to the people that are paying for it, mm -hmm. whether it's people or whether it's you know advertisers at the end of the day. So like, again, like it's tough because don't get hung up on the metrics. But when I started out, man, I think I look at you guys like that are starting out now and you guys are double, triple what I started out with, mm -hmm. you know, and I, when I say like, it took me a hundred episodes, man, I, I, I would love to see my numbers. I, I think I have screenshots back in those days, but I bet my first hundred were probably where you're at today. Really? Yeah. I well, mean, the market's just, different. I mean, podcasts the market's different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not really a fair, it's not really a fair comparison, but for guys that are starting out, like I've, I've reached out to a few guys that have podcasts that have started recently. I'm like, you know, what, what are you getting? You know, what's average. And, and one thing across the board is that I've, I've recently figured this out because um, during hunting season, I didn't pre-plan not recording because I was hunting. So I had <laughs> like a month where I didn't upload and that crush you still paying for it today. <laughs> still paying for it. And uh, if you're going to, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, 
you won't hear me say, if you want to be successful at something, here's what you have to do. If you want to be successful at podcasting, you have to do it more than once a week right now because I'm getting peaks and I'm sharp drop offs and it's, yeah. you're not going to get momentum doing once a week. And I'm it, from, my, from my experience anyways, I'd love to hear what you say about that. Cause you're a two to three, four time a week guy and you're, you know, you have probably the best work ethic for a guy with the podcast that I know of as far as you're uploading and all that stuff. Like no one, no one does it as often as you that I've seen maybe gritty, not even gritty, not even gritty. I mean, and it's funny because Gritty's the one that was like, him and I were having a conversation and he was saying, yeah, going to two or three a week was like what jumped him over the curve. Yeah. That was the best thing he ever did. And at the time I was still doing one a week and I had this concept mm -hmm. like, man, we could do an elk episode every week and people would love it. And from that stemmed the, you know, the, the Wapiti Wednesday and the Muley Monday and things like that. And so I was like, well, let's just, let's just do that. But man, you know, this is the peak season. So let's just do it during the peak season. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, so I went and I, the, the first year we did WAPT Wednesday. And Wait, what's the peak going, season? Sorry to interrupt. What's the peak season for podcasts? Cause I don't I know. I would say April to September. Real, I have no October. idea. There is even a peak season. <laughs> Maybe it's just mine. I mean, and it's interesting uh, because that could be swayed because it's not, it's not completely this way. That is, I would say that's the peak season. However, you know, we do, Last year and the year before, we did Muley Monday, Wapiti Wednesday from roughly June to October. And so we, we dropped, you know, and I, I hit this, you know, skyrocket um, analytics where, you know, I started doing three a week and it started going way up. Well, mm -hmm. just like you, you know, hunting season last year was like, okay, I'm hunting. It's harder to produce three a week, even though we did that this year. Last year, I didn't. And like you watched that slump off at the end of October and it just crippled us. Really? You know, like, it, yeah, it was like, oh man, the numbers were like tank, but they never came back up. Yeah. It wasn't like when I, you know, kept doing one a week after that, it, yeah. it kept. Uh, and so that was brutal. And so this year, I, you know, made a pretty hard effort to make sure we did three a week and had enough backlogged to do that. So, you yeah. know, we had three a week going through all of it. Yeah. But as we dropped down to two a week, we still slumped a little bit. That's interesting. Yeah, before hunting season, I was on track. To, my goal was to hit, I think, 25,000 between June and the end of the year for start to that was my goal mm -hmm. and uh i was gonna smash that like i was gonna go th easy thirty thousand, twenty eight thousand minimum um over you know over and since i took that break i'm like i said i'm only about like eighteen thousand, and i'm like crawling and scratching to get to my not even my goal i'm trying to get to like twenty thousand now and it's like uh like but the hard part is dude it's like so producing two shows a week right now you lose a lot of people that are aren't listening in the off season you got to think most of the most of the listeners at least mine and i don't know if this is for everyone but most of your listeners they're into hunting for bow season or for hunting season so it's you know september and october mm -hmm. and they may they may start thinking about that in july mm -hmm. and they're they're not really thinking about hunting after hunting season. So they're not, you know, unless they're in the industry or like just obsessed and want to hunt year round, they're not really thinking about it in December and January or even February. And so like you have a, a pretty good slump. So it's hard to produce three shows a week in the off season when no one's really paying attention anyway. That makes sense. That makes so really, well, for me, I want to do like, I know what I have to do now and it's, it's just up, up the game, up the work. Yeah. Like, like you said, when Gritty went two or three, that's, that's, I mean, I, I'm just happy I figured that shit out. I'm on episode <laughs> 28, you know, like I'm just happy I figured that stuff out now. Cause I'm looking at my analytics and when I did twice a week, I was literally getting three times, maybe twice, at least three times the growth somewhere around there. Right. So it was, it was like, it wasn't just put in twice, get double. It was actually a little bit more than that. And I'm like, man, if I could just keep going harder. And that's what a conversation me and my wife had is like, I just want to see what uploading three days in a row does on YouTube. Like, I just want to see what that does. Well, dude, this gets into like long game versus short game. And there's short game tactics that work on, you know, the algorithms of certain platforms that are bad for your long game. So for me, I don't want to like, okay, take this six hour compilation podcast, mm -hmm. but I have turned that into six different podcasts and ran that over the entire month of September, which would have saved me three or four interviews that I wouldn't have had to done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I wanted to do one because it was like, <laughs> damn, have you seen like, there's that shock pack. It's that long game. It's like, I'm doing yeah. this for this reason. I'm not doing this so I can stuff more ads on one particular show. So for me, that's, that's, it wasn't a smart move or was it, you know, so you like short term wise, the algorithm of iTunes would have promoted me better if I had produced that show 
and made 20 minute segments and pumped them out every day for two weeks. And I would have gained that. But what's the long term effects of my viewership and my fans by producing a badass six hour podcast? Yeah. You can't measure that. And that's the thing is just think about those things. There's little tactics you can do, but what do you, you know, what do you want to be remembered as? And that's like very long term, but like, what would you rather do? You know, I would rather produce a six hour show that we were like, man, that's the coolest podcast I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. So I had that shock factor. The shock factor did not ROI for me, hmm. at least on the short term. I've got a, I've got a couple questions um, regarding that. Cause um, well, first of all, there's a here. Let's go a different route here. With with uh, you ever heard of Patreon? Yeah. Do you have a Patreon? <laughs> Funny you should say that. We're <laughs> we're we'll be kicking out Patreon and going that route. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can get into that. But I, you know, I, I looked at Patreon three years ago. Was not impressed with it. Didn't like the the model. I have looked at it recently. You know, John, uh, one of the guys on the team, was like look at this, you know, here's some examples of how it's going well, here's what's going. And so we've made the decision to actually go that route and start working with Patreon versus ads. So. Yeah, I just started mine two days. Well, I posted when I, I was up at one forty in the morning setting that shit yeah. up. And uh, <laughs> I, I find, I, I, to my surprise, I have one. <laughs> uh, one guy uh, and I'm sending him a hat So because <laughs> I was so thankful. I was like, dude, you don't know what this means to me. Like I, I had zero expectation. Uh-huh. You, you, so what's your Patreon strategy? Like I, I, I honestly, I'm still learning what Patreon is. I just know <laughs> um, I, the way I had it described to me, cause I was like, I'm not going to, here's my idea of Patreon. Like I'm, like I said, I'm not a smart guy when it comes to technology. So I'm like, I'm not going to set up something where people could just give me money all willy nilly. They need to like buy a hat, you know, like they need to do something. They're not just going to give me money. Like these Twitch guys playing video games. I'm like, that, that's the most stupid shit I've ever seen. Like I'm playing a video game. You're going to pay me money. The guys do that um, yeah. on, on this Twitch website or whatever. I'm like, well, and then Cody from Born is he could, why is like, why are you making that decision for people? Why, if someone likes your podcast and you're providing enough value that they want to pay you and help you grow, why are you making that decision for them? I was like, ah, that's the mindset I need to have, you know? So I'm like, yeah couple months later, fast forward, because that was an older conversation. I'm like, you know, maybe I feel like maybe there's enough value because I'm staying up, you know, late helping these guys. I'm like, maybe somebody will, will do something, you know? And so I did it and uh, I'm going to do it for premium episodes of the podcast for like, because right now they're all audio, but if I do audio visual, that Mm -hmm. guys love audio visual. I mean, they don't really perform very well on YouTube. That's not where people go to listen to podcasts. I mean, yeah. But I think if I had like a premium HD quality podcast, audio visual, and I made that strictly for Patreons, put them in special giveaways, put them in, you know, gave them special access and stuff like that. Maybe that would be worth it for them. I, I don't know. I just really struggle with it. It's, I mean, it goes back to 51%, man. So like, how do you create value that's worth it? And so for us, the transition for Patreon, the reason I stayed away from it is because it felt like, you know, people just begging for money. Like, yeah, that's, and I wanted it, you know, my show, I didn't want that. I wanted, I was always thinking long game, always thinking big picture. And so for me, it wasn't about, you know, like, Oh, Hey, give me money so I can do what I do. Like, it's not mm-hmm. your, it's not your job to pay for what I want to do. Right. Uh, and so like, I, I looked at it in that way. And as we transition is like, I look at it now as like, there's some cool things I want to do that uh, sponsors aren't going to pay for, or it's going to suck my brand in a direction I don't want it to go. And so it's like, okay, if there's things we want to produce, I think we have the fan base. Cause you go to sponsors and you say, Hey, I'm going to do this really cool thing that no one's done before. And they're like, ah, uh, no, <laughs> then you don't really have an option. Cause I get it. Like I'm a company and you're like, Hey, we kind of want to do this, but we don't know if it's going to work at all. You're mm-hmm. like, uh, I'll just pay for the thing that's working cool. Like keep doing that. <laughs> and okay. so I get it. But at the same time, I think, you know, we've built the street credit. I'd like to think that, you know, people trust like, Hey, if we're going to go this route, this is what we're going to do. You know, they'll support that. And Cody's right. Like if you, there's, I mean, how many people have messaged me and be like, dude, if you're ever in such and such, I'll buy you a beer. Yeah. I get that all the time. I'll take yeah. you hunting or let me know. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. And that's awesome. I, you know, I would be hammered if I ever drove across the country, but, uh, <laughs> but the, at the end of the day, like if people want to support that, that's awesome. And that's cool. And like, but I'm not just here for me. And this is like my thing, not anybody else's like, 
everyone has their own kind of two cents on this, but like for me, it's like, okay, how do I, how do I provide the value? Like, so if I'm going to ask for five bucks a month for my audience or 50 bucks a month for my audience, how do I make it worth them to, you know, what, what yeah. do I have that I can offer that? And I don't, you know, for me, it's, it's like it's the merch isn't scalable. Maybe there's an aspect of that, you know, and, and we're looking at giveaways and things like that, but like maybe there's some content. So like maybe you do your, your, you know, your bow reviews or how to set up a bow, but then for someone else on, on Patreon, you can go a little bit and, you know, more in depth. And so you kind of split it up. And so like, here's the more, more in depth or here's how to start a podcast and things like that. And I think it's a, you know, a great way to go. And it's just, I, again, it boils down to like, Hey, how do I produce 51% value? To ah, someone? Just thinking of you talking about that, maybe cause I, I really love, and I just wish I had more success so I could give better advice to guys that are trying to get into the business. You know, like I wish yeah. I was, I wish I was that Gary V of a hunting, you know, like I wish I had all that in my head. Maybe we could have a Patreon where it's to help the niche, you know, help the niche in the hunting industry versus because yeah. I want my information for hunting to be available to, for bow hunting to be available to anybody. I'd hate to see somebody have to pay for access. Although business wise, it totally makes sense. You know, like having more in depth discussion. That's yeah. just stuff. I, that's why I love YouTube is because like I'm taking it from, a machine i'm taking it from a giant corporation and i i don't have any feelings for that like I, <laughs> get me all of it yeah pay me more like but when i'm taking it out of somebody like me that i you know like just one of them like I'm, I'm taking that from my one of my buddy's pockets you know like yeah. i just feel dirty i i don't know like and that that's probably on me because maybe i don't feel that i'm adding enough value to receive that money i don't know so, here's a question for you and this is straight and i've asked i've asked actually actually asked a lot of my friends this uh, and it boils down to like us doing the Wapiti Wednesday and Newly Monday podcast for me you know getting the sponsors and managing it it was just it's just it's tough it's a lot and there's other things I could be doing with my time mm -hmm. and so for the dollar rate that we're receiving on those Newly Mondays and Wapiti Wednesdays I have a hard time justifying it in 2019 and so at the end of the day if it boils down to me getting rid of wapiti wednesday and Mealy monday mm -hmm. are, are guys willing to pay for patreon and like mm. i asked a lot of them like uh if it means it's gonna go away yeah we'll 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 do it really and so you know i had to sit down and be like okay if i if i'm not gonna do it you know or what would be the alternative to me not doing it and so patreon was kind of that alternative and so like do I feel bad? Like, okay, it's five bucks or whatever it's going to be, uh, you know, per month to hear a hundred percent of the shows. You're like, ah, you know, I feel bad. But at the end of the day, the alternative is I don't do them. So, and everyone I've talked to was like, okay, in that case, <laughs> let's mm -hmm. keep going what we're doing, you know? And I, it's a tough decision, but again, it goes back to like, Hey, we got to keep this thing moving forward and do cool things. So if, if, if I'm going to go do something new and try to produce podcasts or a version of that, that no one else has done, something's going to give either. It's, I got to get rid of me Monday, Monday, Wapiti Wednesday, or we got to up the value so I can hire the person to, to do more of that. And so mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's, it's a, it's a numbers game and I got to keep the lights on. And so for me to do cool things and keep this whole evolution of podcasts going forward in a new way that I think we should go, then this is what's going to happen. And so like, that was kind of the tough decision that we made. And I haven't even talked to my audience about this. So we'll see how that goes. you heard it first on here. <laughs> yeah, uh, and like, so everything's not even ironed out yet. And that's something we're working on, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting that it came up. <laughs> yeah. Cause I like, it's just something that I struggle with. And it seems like a lot of guys in the, in, like in the industry that I talk to now, like they all have that same similar mindset. Like they don't want to take money directly out of pockets of, of other guys like on Patreon, but a lot of guys, once they start getting a little bit more bigger, they're like, no, here's why you do that. And guys that have bigger podcasts than me, like you, um, I talked to another one. I even had him on the show from the arms room show. He's like, dude, you wouldn't believe who would pay you to have a podcast. Like yeah. we have tons of guys. I never thought anybody would pay for my podcast, but he's like, we have tons of Patreons. It's like, yeah, we, we get lots in these, and these guys want to pay because we're providing with enough value. And, and, and that's where it's like, well, maybe I don't see my value yet in that i i don't know i that's true we all under undervalue our own value yeah that was a tricky statement but we undervalue ourselves in that you know like look at you know i i'm not good at talking about what we do but if you look at like what we produce as far as wapiti wednesday mm -hmm. man the messages and emails and stuff we get are people like man i had no idea how to 
and you know, Opti Wednesday has changed that or like whatever it might be. And that's cool. And I, I do think there's a lot of value there or underestimated value in the same way. Like, you know, what's it, what's it worth to a guy to buy the wrong bow? Like if he watched your video and he's like, man, this bow sucks. It yeah. just cost him a thousand bucks. Yeah. Is it well, you wouldn't believe the guys that really value, uh, you, you may be able to guess cause you've been in the business, but like what guys really appreciate the bow reviews, you know who they are yeah. uh, places where there's super tight restrictions on what you can own for firearms and bows. And oh, so yeah, they yeah. can't go out and just shoot it at a shop. They have to buy yeah. it. There's yeah. No, so my, me, me shooting that bow is them shooting that bow. Yeah. And so That's I get guys, difference. yeah, I get guys, I think from like, God, where are these guys? Like, uh, Finland? No. Uh, Germany? Uh, just There's probably not a lot of bow ships in Germany. No. I didn't think of that. Like there's, <laughs> that, there's places, I, I forget where some of these countries are, but they can't shoot bows prior to buying them. And so yeah. that's, that's why probably once or twice a week, I'll get a message like, dude, I need a little bit more from you. Like, what would you go with? I'm like, what's your body size? What, you know, <laughs> let me, give me more information about you so I can tell you. Like if you're six five. Mm-hmm. And you have a 32 inch draw, maybe you shouldn't buy this, you know, tree stand edition bow, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. but, uh, so there's, there's value in that, but I, yeah. and that's just, you know, everybody, you know, it is, and here's another thing I, I, I see is guys are always confident. They're, they're uplifting, you know, you're putting basically a mask on when you're going onto a video and you're just showing everybody your best. Everything's always flipping fantastic and everything's going <laughs> everything but yeah. you know, I, I think being transparent and showing that you know guys like me I still struggle I, I'm only about 4,000 subscribers on YouTube right but a guy that is a hundred subscribers I'm a giant and then to me born and raised Hushin they're giants you know on YouTube yeah. and so but it, I think it's actually cool for guys to say no I still struggle with comparing myself to other guys I, I still struggle with my own self-confidence every once in a while and 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 I'm still trying to find my voice like you're saying you know like I think there's a really big empowering thing for that, you know, like, oh, for sure. I don't know. I, I just, I really appreciate that. And, and I think this conversation honestly has been one that I, I've, I've been wanting to talk to you since I, June, I mean, like, I seriously, <laughs> it's like, man, I need some guidance here. Cause I'm like starting my own YouTube again is basically what I'm doing. And yeah. I'm not going through that shit again without a little bit more help. Cause it I took me a year, two years to hit a thousand subscribers. And then this year I've added 3000. That's uh, impressive, man. Yeah, it it went whew. so, and uh, I laid- knowledge from other people helps, and like it's the same way, like with Patreon, yeah. like man, for five bucks or a buck a month to have that network, and like that's another thing, like with Patreon, you could do you're gonna be like, hey, if you give me ten bucks a month, you know, it's a thirty minute Q and A or something. Hmm. The value of that, you know, like there's guys that do that, like yeah, hey, thirty minute Q and A, where it's really useful for you, right? you could jump on and help someone for 30 minutes and it's going to, it could solve a hundred hours of their problem. That's worth 10 bucks. I (laughs) guarantee Great idea. I could see value in that. And I would say, yeah, buy a Patreon. I'll talk to you on the phone, dude. Come on, let's do it. I would, I love that. You know, that right there was worth for me, this whole podcast, that what you just (laughs) said right there. Cause I know, I know talking to people would save them hours. I just uploaded a a, a video on how to site in a bow site, a fast Mm -hmm. XL. And I've been sitting on that for over a year. Like I just didn't want to do the video. It wasn't exciting. I wasn't, you know, excited about it. Well, I finally did it. I had some downtime. I'm like, I need to get this out because I'm still getting questions on how do you sign up this site? I came out with it and this guy that I never followed me before, never seen me was Googling, you know, he's like, I spent hours, hours on YouTube, on the internet, trying to figure out how to sign in that fast Eddie. And he's like, and he's like, I found your upload. And he's like, you saved me. I don't know how many hours of researching and Googling and, and I'm like, cool, man. And now he's a subscriber. But you know, if he would have had that video a year ago, that would have saved him a lot of time, but it's just, and that's the thing is like focus on, and this is like straight advice to you. Focus on things that's going to save people time. And hmm. that's what people buy. People buy time. They, hmm. you know, they buy Lyft, they buy Uber, they buy, they use Amazon because it saves time. And that's yeah. what we want. If you show me a video on how to change the front wheel bearing on my truck, and it saves me like hours. You understand how like you working on a pickup, like just the right video. You're like, yeah. oh, hey, well, I figured I've out this cool. if you got to get it in this life. I've spent like, before YouTube existed, I've you know, spent like four, four hours trying to figure out how to get a damn bolt off. And like you go on YouTube and some 12 year old's like, oh, if you come in from this angle, it'll yeah. work. It'll pop it up. And, oh, yeah. That, you know how much that's worth? Four hours? Yeah. Like to me, that's worth 
hundreds of dollars. Like, yeah. So the same thing, like, oh, how to set up a boat. Like, focus on the things that, that do how to save time and in your capacity and what you could do. And so, like, whether that's, like, finding the best bow, uh, how to set up your site, how to, you know, you did that video on uh, setting up your arrows and things like that and how to paper tune and things like that. Those are going to save people time. And, you know, whether it's the same thing John Dudley has or not, you know, yeah. like, guys are going to find – things they like about you that they hate about Dev, and they're yeah. gonna you know and vice versa and i think you just focus on that that would be my advice and yeah set up the patreon and people want to like hey you know i need to set up this bow of course i'm gonna become a patreon member because now i can talk to garrett and be like hey you know what yeah. do i do here or like how do i do this or whatever it may be like some version of that dude that's a killer idea I, i'm actually gonna execute that tonight i'm gonna start <laughs> on that. like i that's that's another tip for guys that are listening to this podcast if you have information, you have to execute it. Information without application is yeah. might as well be useless. It, it is completely useless. If you're not going to apply it, like when I talk to the born and raised guys, I think they like, and I stroke my own ego here for a second. They like working with somebody like me because when they tell me something, they're going to almost immediately see me applying that shit. Because like from the time that I learned about a podcast to the time of me actually starting one was not, wasn't, you know, when born raised guys told me to start a podcast, it had to be two months later, three months later. Like, okay. Start the podcast. And that was, you know, setting it up, you know, figuring it out. You know, a lot of guys they'll sit on this stuff and then they're motivated, but there's no application there. I mean, it's just, if you guys are wanting to grow your stuff, listen to what Cody said, listen to what I said and, and apply what we're saying. Yeah. It just do, you know, we, we talk about this in the comp, like within my own team, someone will be like, Hey, what do you think about doing this or this? And like, everyone knows it's yes, do both and see what works. Like it just do. Like, I don't like, I don't, yeah. I can't tell you what's a better idea. Yeah. And so, you know, do what you think, go with your gut. But so many people sit on ideas, dude. And I think that like my biggest takeaway is like, if you think you want to do a YouTube channel or you think you want to do a podcast, you think you want to do whatever it may be, just do it just and like it doesn't have to be perfect when i launched my podcast this is a funny story about my intro my intro i man I, I thought it had to be perfect and blah blah blah. and i was like ah, you know what screw it i'm just gonna put this out i can change it whenever no one's listening to my podcast anyway <laughs> In intro three years later dude i i think i hit like export on that at 12 30 at night or whatever and it's still there like it yeah. doesn't matter like you're just gonna you're, you're gonna grow like you're gonna work through it like don't nothing has to be perfect just do it and because you learn along the way, like if, if Cody Callum would have not produced a film until he had perfect film or, or, you know, the version that he has today, he would have never done anything. That's but, a good point. You know, you, you look back at his early videos and, and it's like this creation, like he just slowly started building his own style yeah. and the same thing, like, you know, me and audio, like it just kind of grows and you learn as you go. Exactly. You, well, look at me. Like, you think I know everything I knew now when i started my youtube stuff i didn't know half the shit i know now when i started my youtube stuff like it's a constant it's it's that's, that's why i share as i learn i share you know as i learn i grow as i share i you know it's just you know no one has all the answers and if you're waiting for the resources i was i was always told you know if you're waiting for the resources to come to you you gotta you got your opposite way around if you want to start something move in that direction and then the resources will get closer you can't wait for the resources just to produce themselves someone the other day uh I posted some Instagram thing and it was like, Oh man, I just can't wait till I'm that point in my life when I can do that. And like, I just couldn't even wrap my head around what that meant. Like, I'm like, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> like, how do you, how do you get five days off or how do you welcome? Like, I what saw is the, that. What is the question? I saw that. And like, I still, I, I still what got was his reply? That. I never saw the reply. I honestly don't remember. It had something to do with the fact of like having kids and, and you know, not being, you know, single income and things like that. And I understand that. And there's, those are complications that everyone has, but, I understand that, but there's also plenty of guys that are doing it with that same situation. Oh yeah. And it's dude, it's, if you want it, you'll do it. Like exactly. where's your priorities? Everyone says, I don't have enough time. That's the stupidest comment. And I say it, I'm guilty <laughs> of saying I don't have enough time. It just means that it's not a priority for me. That, that's exactly what I say. Yeah. It's like, I'm just not, yeah, it's just not important enough for me to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's things like I'm sure I should be doing, but like, like creating a YouTube channel for me, like I, I say, I don't have time. I can't it's all relative it's the same amount of time it's just going somewhere else it's just not the priority for me mm -hmm. and so like the same thing if you want to go on an elk hunt like man i i talked to so many people that someday i'm gonna go on elk hunt. Like, someday like i don't understand the problem here <laughs> where's that on the calendar can you show me where is it in between monday and Tuesday? I don't, I don't yeah. See it. <laughs> just, yeah yeah 
yeah, just do, man. Just do. Yeah, it sits right in February. <laughs> Never got February. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, I I think this was a great conversation, man. And, and yeah, not worry about time, but we already went for two hours. <laughs> like the great the best conversations just fly by i mean i yeah. recorded ones with uh some of my best buddies and and as soon as i hit the record button i'm like i'm not uploading that shit and I'm like that was a horrible <laughs> conversation dude he's like what do you mean i'm like you felt it he's like yeah you, you, i don't know if you've ever not uploaded something right after recording it you immediately know like that was just the worst episode it's clunky you know <laughs> but i'll tell you i've had episodes where i postponed uploading i was like man that was a bad podcast i shouldn't <laughs> no it's bad one. And then I'll do it and like inevitably two or three people are like, that's the best podcast I've ever heard. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> what <in> the hell? <laughs> when I uploaded that site, that study in the fast Eddie, I'm like, I'm like, I almost didn't name up. So I'm like, that's the shittiest video I've uploaded in a year, over a year. Like I just, it's horrible. And then I got good feedback, good feedback. Good. Like if you scroll through the comment section, it was like not one negative comment. Like it's all positive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's like, I guess I just don't know my audience, you know, like, I, I don't know. It goes so back I, to that producing something great for 10%. And like, exactly. you know, what seems, and this is like, this happens to me with Wapti Wednesday. I'll have a podcast where I'm like, man, we didn't really talk about anything good, but what's good to <laughs> me is different than what's good to a guy that's never elk on before. And yeah. so, you know, something that's, you know, like Jason and I, Jason Phelps and I could have a, uh, a conversation and I'm like, ah, it just, it kind of feels like just a regular conversation. Maybe we yeah. didn't really, I didn't have that gem, you know, I'm looking for that gem and, yeah. And then someone's like, man, that was the best podcast I've ever heard. I'm like, what? Yeah. That's the first podcast you've ever heard? Like, I was like, <laughs> yeah, is that the first? <laughs> yeah, I had him on and, and uh, guys really loved that that episode. And, and uh, that was the first time I met him and I ever talked. And it was it was kind of a little weird, you know, because like you're talking to a dude that I've seen and I kind of looked up to in the industry. And it's like, man, like, it's just kind of like, like with that Born and Raised first episode, that was pretty damn intimidating. I'll tell you, my my voice was in like up here is like heart was in my throat is just but you know it i don't know just genuine you just gotta You'll be, laugh about it someday dude you'll be like yeah. oh i'm friends you remember with how you. bad i was and i mean, started <laughs> i'll be saying that about the 100th episode probably but all right brother well i'll let you get going and uh yeah, let's yeah. not let's not wait to do another one let's let's do this some other time and for sure you know, i've got so many questions we could we could do episode after <laughs> episode, but i know you yeah, got dinner to be getting to here soon anyways well, We'll see how it goes. And maybe everyone's going to be like, man, that was, that was, that was the shittiest episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, buddy. Well, thanks for having me on, man. All right. See you, dude. All right. Later. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this week's episode of the podcast. Thank you, Cody, for coming on to the show. A few requests for you guys. Go check out Cody's podcast. He uploads all the time, two or three times a week onto his podcast. So you're always getting fresh information. And if you have a, if you have a chance or a need, Go check out his uh, his backcountry fuel box. It's such a great idea. I wish you know this would have been around well, a long time ago. You get to try out these foods that you that you would have to pack six miles if you didn't want to use them prior to going hunting, just to find out if they're good or not. Why not use them before, and then you can find out what your pack's going to look like, what it's going to weigh. You know what you like, you know what you don't, and that's what this box is for: is to make sure that you're not packing food six miles deep that you're going to hate eating when you get back there. So there's a really big benefit for guys that do that. And uh, I'm telling you right now, I can't wait to get my first one. You know, he got me solo one. So um, go check him out. Back, Backcountry Fuel Box. It's a newer company. He's trying to grow it. And uh, I think it's a great service for the guys that want to want to make sure they're bringing good food back with them that they're going to eat. So, all right, guys, that's it for this episode. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.